Uh, all right. Well, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. My guest today, Mr. Keith Roberts. What's up? Legendary guitar player out here in Las Vegas. <laughs> pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. It's a pleasure to be here. How you Absolutely. been? How you been doing, man? Been doing good, uh, despite this uh, entire craziness that we're all going through. Uh, I've uh, managed to uh, continue to keep working, which is kind of the opposite of uh, a lot of my friends and uh, people like yourself who are not having the uh, luck to be able to get out, out there and work yeah. as hard as you do. It would be nice to get back to it, man. That's a blessing. What are you? Uh, so, what are you doing for a living that you were able to keep your job during the uh, apocalypse? So, uh, I work for a company named EStudioStar.com. Okay. And uh, we're here local. We're a pro audio uh, recording DJ guitar parts kind of company. Uh, we specialize in uh, studio monitors, studio setups. Uh, interfaces, all that software that comes with it, a lot of the focus right type stuff and oh, Persona awesome. stuff. So everybody gets the whole thing in one package. Uh, microphone stands, etc., etc., etc. Uh my brands I actually work on are the cool stuff, you know, Seymour Duncan, bare knuckle pickups. Uh, I've been doing radial, which uh, is very good. And uh, my new uh line is Behringer. Oh cool. So, I mean, it's a crazy selling company. I mean, uh, the amount of stuff that they have. Oh, yeah. But uh, East Studio Star is uh, just a, a great place and a great home for me. It's uh, I'm very blessed I have it. Uh, uh, funny story uh, is, uh, you know, besides the coolness, I mean, we sell on eBay, Amazon, Reverb, all the marketplaces, and then we have our own place. You know, you grow up as a you know, kid and you go into a, a music shop and you're like, you see people sitting around and like, you're like... How do they make money? Like as a kid in the 80s, when you walked into these shops, it's like you see these mom and pop shops. It's like, how are they making money? It was so hard. But with the Internet now and the eBay and the Amazon culture, the the reach to customers for the items that they need is so unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, funny story is uh, not a funny story. I mean, it. it the whole COVID lockdown, everything like that, it, it really did stink. But for East Studio Star, it got crazy. Yeah. It got totally nuts because there are people who now found themselves with a lot of time and needed to do a podcast show or their music or their art or their creativity and stuff like that. So uh, it, it got a little crazy from March to about August. We, we, we couldn't keep up with the orders. We were, I mean, we just pushing stuff out. People wanted microphones, mixers, and everything they, they can get their hands on. And it was really crazy for a while. Yeah, I remember when we um, when we first started, it was a hard time getting my hands on any of this equipment. Yeah. And uh, and then I was looking it up later. You know, sometimes I like to have a backup of, of a piece of equipment that's like a core piece that, sure. like, if it goes, it's like, oh, there goes your show. Yeah. Um, like the video switcher, for instance, right? It's like if that goes i would love to have a second one and, of course uh but uh they were gone they're sold out they're Cleaned. just yeah there's they just don't exist and uh what's it called they they like almost doubled in price for a second they did double in price the market is just became ridiculously insane i mean i'm seeing the worst of it out there with certain people just gouging people at yeah. prices I've, I've never seen i mean we're following the rules we're not Breaking map is what they say online. It's a manufactured actual price or something like that. Yeah. Got to stick to a price, you know, be competitive with everybody. But there's some people out there that are just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, you know. Uh, so yeah. It's quite He's always going to be that guy. Yeah. He'll, he'll put it up for double price and hold out and he'll get it. Yeah. But uh, East Studio Star is a great place. Uh, I, I encourage anybody to come down and get whatever they need. You know, I'm always reaching out to people. I think that's how I reached out to you first. I just, I was just so excited to see your, your new setup and your creation and everything like that. Besides the show being totally awesome and Thank entertaining. You. And, uh, of course, it, even more, it's this locals, you know, is really getting to know locals better. We don't have a chance to go out and have a beer with them right now, you know? Yeah. So you're really bringing that experience to Las Vegas right now. So I just wanted to reach out and say hello and uh, tell you about that store and, uh, you know, say if you ever needed anything, let me know. But you've got everything you need. Dude, I went I went 
freaking ape. Sh- no, I don't want to say. Ape. Yeah, I don't want to say that because I'm not supposed to be swearing. I went right. bonkers. We don't like because I turned it into Ned Flanders, yeah. bro. Totally. Uh, over. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, though, I was like, make sure it all works. Make sure that's all yeah. happening. And it was a lot of trial and error. Sure. A lot of returning stuff that didn't work properly with everything that I thought oh, yeah. that would, like worked the way I was hoping it would work when I sure. ordered it. I know the thing too about returns. Yeah. When you're building studio stuff, I mean, that's just part of the game. It's like, well, you know. Sure. You got to do what you got to do to make it work of now. Course. And then it's like, oh, and then, oh, I spent $1,500 on shit that needs to be returned. Totally. You better return that shit. Right. So. <laughs> and hope to, and hope for no, no restocking fee. Yeah, exactly. So that's one of the things I love about Amazon is yeah. Amazon's really good about the returns. Very good. Yeah. And then, uh, and they get you your money back fast. Yeah. Send it in. Sometimes you get your. Re- sometimes you get a refund before it even gets there. Yeah, yeah. They're they're pretty crazy about that stuff. Yeah, they are. They'll 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 fucking give you your money back <laughs> on like uh, Amazon credit real quick, and then all of a sudden you can just use yeah. it again and get shit moving. I heard you can uh, use Bitcoin now on Amazon. Yeah, that's cool. You can start using some currency, which is uh, pretty mind blowing from what my wife says. Well, yeah, the whole world's going away from that, right? Like, yeah. they're just, they're, it's not even like a slow paced change. They're yeah. just like, we're not accepting cash anymore. No. All over the place. I don't, I'm not comfortable with that just yet. It's not cool. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's just kind of uncomfortable. It's like, ugh. Yeah. You know? I wish I wasn't in such a tight spot financially so I could start investing in like silver and gold because you know people are going to want those silver and gold coins to have sure. some kind of actual currency to, uh, to like exchange with people. Right. So that's going to be which is something I never ever got into. I was never smart enough to just you know really even think about that stuff. I I never yeah. collect silver, gold, stamps, just kiss stuff. You know? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the equity in that right now is going to help out. Uh, so is it true you have a kiss tattoo? I have my whole back is a so kiss okay. Tattoo. So it, this is well, one half of, my back. This is one of my favorite things about you is like the whole because like. I know you, and you know when I first met you, uh, you you're an intimidating person. You know, not not in a bad way. You have a you have a, a soul that shines around you, and you could see it. And if people can see those types of things, I saw it. You know, especially with Thank Crapper you. Man and everything like that. It's a, especially with Tyler and the, and the chemistry and everything like we that. We really helped each other. It was wild vibe, man. Totally wild. Uh, but. Uh, I forgot my original point. What were we talking about? You were complimenting me. You yeah. keep doing that. Uh, absolutely. I've stayed <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forgot where we were going with that. But, uh, uh, yeah, when I first met you, you know, I was just like, you know, you were very empowering, you know, had that, uh, had that focus. Thank you, man. I've always been uh, a crazy person my whole life. So <laughs> I, I, I really bring a lot to right. everything I do. And yeah. sometimes it's a little too much. And sometimes it's a little too much for other people. <laughs> right. But what drives me crazy is like, so I know you as this, you know, Cracker Man guy and incredible sound man in this world that you live in. And then it's like, I know how big of a Primus fan you are. I love Primus. I know you do. And like, for the past 48 hours, uh, I play a lot of online poker, which we can get into later. But I, I'm like doing My Name is Mud, like, you know, tapping like all the time, thinking about this interview. I'm just like, My Name is Mud. Uh, but, and then, like, to know that you're such a big Kiss fan is not something that ever is in the ingredients in anybody on on earth (laughs) like i don't think these ingredients exist in any other human being oh i love kiss man i should show you the tattoo i'll show it to you i do want to see it podcast man okay let me just do this i do want to see it because it's 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 fun man so i got my boy did it all wow and he did it good oh yeah he's awesome oh my god he did it really good Yeah, ace looks great. It's very difficult for people to get ace correct. Yeah. Okay. Gene looks great. Paul looks phenomenal. And they they got Peter on point. All this we uh we were really uh <sighs> we were really adamant about making him the seventies kiss. When you know, it's out. funny, I could tell one is from like seventy nine, one is from seventy eight, one is from like seventy six, seventy seven, and one might be from about 77 gene so yeah. I, ace is ace is 79 i could tell that's the d- dynasty looking ace paul looks like if i remember correctly like rock and roll over 77 78 peter chris looks like he's 78 
uh, 77 Destroyer or Rock and Roll over. And Gene looks like a little bit like a Love Gun era right there. Yeah, he's kind of like got a demon thing going on, yeah. right? Like he doesn't have pupils and like his eyes are just like pure white. And then we, yeah. we really wanted to make him kind of look more of a demon. Totally. But it was also, Gene was his my boy Ray Eversall, who was right. one of the uh, guests I had on the podcast early on. Uh, shout out to Ray Eversall. And uh, he did Gene was, as his first portrait piece ever. And as a tattoo? As a tattoo, yeah. He's never done a, a portrait tattoo. And I wanted a kiss tattoo, and then um, I just wanted, like, the the little circle logo with the small cartoon versions of the faces, yeah. like maybe on my arm or something sure. like that. Yeah. I, had, I wasn't committing my whole back. Yeah. And then he's just like, come on. <laughs> just let me do it, you know? And I'm too afraid while, to put a kiss tattoo on me. I'm, oh, yeah? Little, as big as a fan I am, I'm a little afraid to do that. The commitment, you know? I'm not sure. I have this, like, love-hate relationship with kiss. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, I, I, I have, you know, I've, I've just... You know, New Yorker, sensitive, you know, moody kind of guy. I always get my opinion about them and I go back and forth on things and it's a love hate. I mean, I absolutely love them. I mean, I, my crib was under a kiss poster. I was born yeah. into kiss as a child and it, it, it did not go away fast and it'll never go away. They're they're an amazing act, man, the and uh, yeah. and they're a lot of fun to talk shit about too. You know, when you <laughs> totally. get into it, and yeah. it's, uh, there, there's just a bunch of silly, ridiculous things you can say about Kiss, yeah. and uh, I don't, I love that kind of stuff. You know, like uh, I, I don't take it like uh, as having the tattoos. I, I don't have right. to defend. Sure. Him or anything, no, I'll no. jump right in and badmouth them the whole time. Excellent. I got the tattoos <laughs> on my back. Uh, <laughs> exactly. That's the best part. Yeah. Uh, they're just, a, they're a happening. You know, there's this thing that fucking happened that's yeah. just crazy about this version. So I have world. this theory that KISS should be taught as a college course. I would, there's way worse shit being taught in colleges right. that don't need to be college courses. Okay. Cause like my opinion, okay. I, to me, the Beatles are the number one band in the world. Okay, yeah. they are the greatest rock and roll band that ever existed. Period. Agreed. But it's bizarre that four years later, four and a half years later, another band that had equal, if not possibly, arguably better success than the Beatles, arguably. Yeah. How do you even? I mean, they're good, but the Beatles were like the first pop act, though, right? Like they totally. were overwhelmed. Well, not pop act, but I guess rock and roll. I mean. Originally, it was pop, though. Sure, sure, like they, sure. They 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 were doing the they were the like every act that came after the Beatles. It, it seemed like the record label was trying to reproduce that level of fandom, that sure. like, like a, that fanatical response that totally. people have to them. Where you watch old videos of freaking Beatles, and the crowds freaking out. And, yeah. So my brothers used to tell me when I was a kid, of course, the gullible son that I was, the third one, you know, yeah. uh, the baby. They would tell me, you know. Well, they were, they would originally tell me that, you know, uh, that was the Beatles in makeup and, uh, oh, because, kiss? yeah, because that was their thought in 76 as a kid, as that when they're like 12 year olds, they're thinking, well, what if this is the Beatles in makeup? What if this is their crazy comeback? I mean, you know, conspiracies at a 10 year old's oh. mind in 1976 must be wild. Yeah. Okay. So they're all singing. They're all standing kind of together. The microphones are the same, which I think is beautiful. That's my favorite thing about kiss. And uh, <laughs> it's one of the biggest arguments in one of the uh, Kiss trivia bands that I played with uh, here in town uh, is that the microphone things, it drives me nuts, is Kiss should always be microphone left, microphone right, and nothing in the middle, just like the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, it, Paul Stanley said it always showed that we were one band instead of one guy leading and stuff like that, you know? So yeah, that was just my favorite thing in the world about Kiss, you know? It's, it, and it's kind of cool. It kind of looked like the Beatles, you know? But just imagine the conspiracy as a kid smoking a dude for the first time going, oh my God, what if it's the Beatles, you know? Uh, the heaviest version of the Beatles right? ever. I had poppy songs, you know, just in drag and just... <laughs> a crazy, crazy concept kisses from the business to the hype, the music, the imagery. It, it, it's mind blowing to me. Yeah. You know? Totally mind blowing to me. Well, and I mean, nobody had ever done anything that insane before and uh, it was going to work. Like, I, I think Gene knew it from the beginning. You know, totally. he's like, this is going to work. Right? Sure. Like, if, if we just 
perform and keep being consistent, right? Yeah. It's, it's guaranteed. That was the tough part, consistency. That's always the tough part, especially when you're when you're doing art with other people. Like yeah. other people are hard to get along with in general. Sure. And then uh, f- getting four people together, sure. and then getting a schedule together. Keep and then, okay, now you've been doing it for two, three years. Everyone's getting a little bored and itchy. Yeah. And it's like that's usually when every band dies. Is about that three year mark if they ever make it that far. Yeah. And uh, and so just the consistency part alone, not yeah. breaking up, not killing each other. That's hard enough. Yeah. It's very exciting to get into a band of brothers and have the, that dream. You know, it's it was, I guess I touched on it maybe once or twice, maybe three times if I'm really counting, but it was always that glimmer of hope and just going over, hoping that it would just go over like a roller coaster, you know? Yeah. It's so exciting, you know, especially when the, the oil is, is hot and the chicken is cooking, baby, you know, <laughs> crispy. You know, it's a fun thing, but I, I just, I, I can't imagine the entity Kiss goes 47 years plus, you know? Yeah. I was kind of hoping about 10 years ago that they were going to do the whole Kiss version two. Yeah. That, that, that's still going to happen, I I bet. mean, that's my dream, you know? I've been waiting, wishing for that, wishing, wanting, doing, as uh, Brian yeah. Griffin would say. Yeah. Uh, I've been dreaming for that opportunity my whole life. But now I, now I think I may have exceeded the age of possibility now. Like, timing couldn't have got worse uh, again, you know? Uh, yeah, Gene will be hiring some some 25-year-old or something like that to Which take over for just Paul and him. Which make me so sad, you yeah. know, I had that opportunity, you know, yeah. when I was at the prime of Kiss Tribute. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the uh, phone call at Gene Simmons? No, tell me about that. So I have it. I'll send it to you on the the old SoundCloud. That'd be tight. So I'm living in New York City in 1998 with Jesse Camp. You remember Jesse Camp? Yeah. So I was in his band. Uh, it was kind of like uh, he was globe trodden, and he just was like left the keys. You know, I was. Just, I'm going to live in the city, mom and dad. I'm out of here. You know, totally living it up at 20, 21. Uh, and, uh, he was always like, he was always like, never knew where he was. So I remember leaving the apartment, which was the red square in New York city. If you ever heard of the red square, yeah. uh, I think it's the red, red square. It's on a uh, house end. It's got the guy, the Kremlin guy up the, up they the top. They have one in the Mandalay Bay, right? I think so. Yeah, exactly. That statue, you know, is in New York city on this building. Anyway, crazy people live there. Uh, spin doctors, Heather Graham, uh, a couple of other famous people it was a wild building uh so anyway i go out to get something to eat and i come back and there's a voicemail and i'm like Psst. hi keith it's gene simmons and he starts rambling to jesse he's like uh, my boss my boss you know hey yes boss yes boss he's like uh i hear you do a, a great ace so if uh, ace gets sick why don't you uh, come up and rock out with us for a bit and i'm like you have to be kidding me now, uh, the type of person that I am, uh, you know, quirky and electronic you know, I did whatever I had to do in 1998 to make sure I had that for the rest of my life. Oh, I, I had bet. this, like, tape recorder, you know, the boom box, right? I'm just like, click. I'm like, I can't believe, first off, I'm like, I can't believe I missed this call, you know? But I'm like, now I have this forever, Yeah. you know? I tried to hold it to him. I, I was never aggressive enough. I wasn't that type of person. I, I just, there's a a fine line between being pushy and what, but there was a couple of opportunities I never really had, you know, but I always wish I had to just, I just wanted to play either a sound check with them or my dream. My dream was to play one show with kiss, you know, in a perfect costume, the whole show, the whole shebang. I would have, I would have just absolutely loved it. You know, that's how much I love. I used to love kiss. I mean, I still love kiss a lot, but they're amazing. Know, yeah. It's just a, it's just a wild concept, wild band and uh, wild history. Oh yeah. Yeah. I always go see Kiss, man. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I, I might have missed him a couple times in my life, but I've been to a lot of Kiss concerts. What was your first Kiss concert? I think the first time I actually saw them live, was it that one? I might have seen them live before that. Maybe Aerosmith and Kiss tour might have been the first wow. one. 
So like where they did a co-headliner. Yeah, two thousand early two thousand. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it would be early two thousands. My fir- my very first concert was Ozfest two thousand one. So um, I was Oz born Fest. in nineteen eighty five. So I was like sixteen. Sick. Yeah, I'd gone to a bunch of like local shows and shit before then, but like that was that's yeah. a real concert. Totally. Right? They got line arrays. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> One of the cooler ones that I got to go. You to get early excited on. about Lion Array at sixteen. You're like, oh my god! Oh, so, I, I knew what I was doing the rest of my life. Totally. when I was real young, you know. Uh, it, it, I, I actually did some work in like uh, body modification, tattooing, and piercing sure. before I made the jump to like actually push to be an engineer. But like, I was the whole time I was doing that. I was always working as an engineer for free, just because I got to get my hands on the knob. Sure. You know, what's that one do? What's that one do? Sure. Uh, yeah. I fucking nutball. I remember, uh, seeing kiss at, uh, Oceanside camp Pendleton. Uh, my buddies were there and we went, uh, they had a free concert and it was like, it was a USO show. So it was like destiny's child played sure. and kiss played. Yeah. And, uh, and then they had, Ted Nugent there. Sure. And Ted Nugent's band was Godsmack. Like, Godsmack played a set. Then Ted Nugent came out, and then Godsmack, like, was like, all right, let's jam with no Ted shit. Nugent. Yeah. Yeah. It was a pretty cool show. Yo, I pissed off Ted Nugent once. It was my one of my top five favorite moments in life. Yeah, that's it probably not that hard. Well, it's not that hard. No. It's, <laughs> so you're right. It's not like it's this great gold medal. But so we were walking around, and it's a Kiss uh, tribute band. And he stops, like, because we're, like, promoting the show, and we're walking in the back of the in the back of the arena or something like that. We were at a pub Pavilion, you know, with the grass setting, uh, and we, he he stops a song. Ted Nugent stops a song to tell us, "Keep walking. I don't want to see you guys get out of here. I don't want it because everybody's going nuts for the Kiss Trivia Band. You know, we're walking around like goofing off, and he stops his show to like push us along and shit like that. It just it made me so happy. You That's know? so great. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Yeah, he's got an attitude out of it. So that's for sure. I'm yeah. sure it was. Uh, I'm sure he's uh, laughing about it too backstage. Totally, totally. But, uh, he's an honorary fucker with a gun in his hand. Uh, yeah, with a gun in his. Uh, he, he's he's packed during a show all the time. Yeah. Oh, even on stage, does he? He wears yeah. a gun on stage. I opened up for him uh, with uh, an artist that I played with about eight years ago, and uh, we were doing a East Coast tour with Ted Nugent. And, you know, always on the last night of the tour, that's when the artist comes and say, says hello, you know. Uh, they don't mess with you the first 10 shows, you know. 11th show, all right, thanks for coming along, you know. And he comes back there, and, of course, you know, we start talking about guns. And he goes, he just lifts up his shirt. He has two in there. <laughs> he goes, I, don't, I haven't played a show without him in 10 years, and I never will. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. He's ready. And he knows, you know, he's he's. Especially now. Especially now. I mean, and he's his, his mouth is, you know, smart mouth, you know, very smart, intelligent mouth. You know? Yeah. But he's loud and yeah. he's proud. Oh, so yeah. So good for him, you know. He's a fucking character. He is. I love, I love his lifestyle. I wish I could live like right. he lives, where <laughs> he has that whole uh, wild property that totally. just fucking buffalo or yeah. roaming on his land. Oh, absolutely. It's amazing. Totally. I wish I could do that, too, but I'd be useless as a farmer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> We're learning. Uh, we started growing some food out back. Yes. Uh, and I... we actually got to eat some this year, so that was cool. Excellent. Do you know how hard it is to grow food in Las Vegas? It's really hard. And, Me uh, and my wife have been trying to grow everything from roses to eggplants and uh, tomatoes, and it's... You have to show you the backyard after the podcast, man. Yeah. Freaking, uh, we, got the, we got the tomatoes to grow, uh-huh. We got, uh, and we have a big rose garden out there as well. Excellent. It's starting to get roses again now that it's not 120 degrees outside. Is this the planting season? Is this the planting season for roses, or is there? I don't know. Is there a window, or you just know. intuition? I've had, I've had a garden out there for a while, so yeah. we got we just got it really going yeah. properly. Where there, it's like it's your blue. intuition, farmer. You just go with it. Yeah, I just do. I do. I just get my hands in the dirt, and what works yeah. works, and what dies, I go. Don't do that again. And I'm trying I read. To, yeah, but. I got a, I got a great, uh, I, I, I don't nurse too many plants. I got a couple of things. I got a nice cactus. I, uh, she, my wife doesn't let me water too much in the house. I do the outside watering. Yeah. Uh, cat grass is a little t- more difficult. lenient. Yeah. Lenient. Yeah. My cactus is good though. Um, but, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh man, I lost that train of thought again. It's Losing amazing. that train of thought. It's amazing. Watering uh, the cactuses outside. Yeah. The plant. So there's this plant at work and, uh, it's a poinsettia and we got it at work, I think, in November, 
last November, not future November. And it, you know, it just stays around and I just tried, you know, as a plant, I tried to keep it going. So I've been giving it the pH water, you know, and it blew up and it's been growing and growing rapidly at this like wild rate. And my brother, who's a florist, thinks that that's uh, actually quite rare to see. Uh, apparently, my brother's like, well, you're supposed to take poinsettias, put them in a uh, paper bag and close them up for the season and then bring them back to life, which is weird because I know some plants you do close up. Yeah. Very bizarre concept. Like my lantanias. Yeah. You trim them super tight out, right. out in the yard. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Like, it's got so much. <laughs> right. And, and it just, it does. It, like, dies out when you leave it. Yeah. And then I trimmed up. Uh, you know, I, I was like, well, fuck it. I'll do what I'm, what I'm doing. What I'm told I don't know right. better than they do. <laughs> right. And uh, I trim them all up. And then the ones that I like, I trimmed half of them. Right. And the ones yeah. that I trimmed are twice the size of the ones I left alone. Yeah. Because they start rapid fire growing again from nothing. That's at, once, crazy. Once the weather's right. Yeah. That's kind of the thing with this uh, point set. I'm very proud of it. It's my baby at work right now. It's just, it just blew up like to this monstrous thing. I think it's the pH water. Number one. I'm using that good filter water. I'm not telling my boss. I'm not using the faucet water. Ah. Uh, using the good water, and it's just nice to see a plant grow. And uh, I, But it's not turning red, so I'm not sure if it's ever going to turn red. It's just only green leaves. Huh. It's kind of weird. But it's growing like hell. Yeah. I wish I could grow other things, but I don't have the patience to grow other things. Yeah, that takes uh, a lot of love, man. you got to get in there daily. Um, but uh, it's it's really a fun passion project sure. for sure when you're growing other things yeah absolutely there's just no f it's man whenever you're on the road though it's like that shit's done for you, nobody's gonna be able to take <laughs> care of it the way right. that you were taking care of it as you nursed it and grew it up and got it all big and sexy sure and then uh, and then it's like yeah I come back and it's dead yeah every uh, time but you know original thought like growing stuff for for me and my wife has been quite difficult I, I told her we're gonna take everything out in our backyard and we're gonna put a one course mini golf in there oh tight you know just a one course super cool kind of difficult level five on a scale of one to ten make it fun tiki put some tiki stuff back there yeah we like that, we like that tiki village stuff a lot of, we have a lot of that stuff i have uh i have like six tiki torches and oh yeah yeah the, in the backyard and we were going to do that exact thing where we were going to get the, the tight turf and sure and put a couple golf courses back there so it's like you can hang out with the fire going and totally barbecue and just like hit some ball it's like <laughs> man what else do you want right <laughs> nothing nothing at all man it, yeah it's nice nice so yeah it's fun uh fuck what was i gonna say i could talk about kiss for two hours <laughs> right yeah i was gonna say we ended up on uh speaking of kiss still we ended up on that uh that uh, USO show we ended up on a DVD so really? I, I got to be in a KISS concert cause get me, out yeah me and all my friends well not all my friends like uh, at the time we we went as uh, Gene, Paul and Ace so there's you know no Paul uh, no Peter no Peter okay. no Peter We're yeah no nobody wants to why be is everybody, cat. Yeah, why is everybody leaving him out <laughs> it's fucking funny man uh, he, I love Peter Chris I yeah, absolutely great. am enamored with him I, I just amazed by his voice amazed by you know his his drum and everything he did for Kiss it was awesome. Oh, dude, he uh, Kiss Alive is like my favorite thing to play drums to. Totally, it's so much fun because it's just like one, two, three, drum roll. One, right. two, three, <laughs> drum roll. And this is like yeah. fucking get it, Peter. Yeah. yeah, I remember as a kid, I always just bashing away, bashing away on shit. I always constantly wanted to play drums. It was the only instrument my parents wouldn't let me have in my house. That was my. Uh, Boo, boo hoo story as a as a kid I, I i hated that i couldn't have a drum set they're like anything else but a drum set it's <laughs> like uh, i didn't i didn't play guitar or bass till i was later in my life like 18 uh, 16 17 i didn't start early i wish i started a little early wish i cared a little bit more yeah i do too i was more into video games at first like my grandma was a phenomenal piano player really? and uh and she was trying to teach me when i was like five and i was like i learned a couple little you know you learn yeah. chopsticks and stuff sure. like that uh green leaves just, just random little things like that we were like oh i can play a piano totally and uh and then you know brush that off and then i didn't pick up an instrument till like fifth grade but it was yeah. drums Ugh. i really loved it really man after my heart 
Yeah, it was a blast. But my dude, my music teacher was a jerk. <laughs> he totally just uh, like I I stopped playing again because yeah. my music teacher was such a really just a dick about everything. Yeah. How? And like I was already like playing. hard on you or he just he, just, an, just a jerk. I'm uh a jerk in general. Like he sure. would say shit like, "Oh, you'll never make it in the music industry" and shit like that. And it's like, oh. fuck you. Uh, <laughs> you know, you'll never be a musician. Uh, cause I was trying to have fun, you know, and it was, sounds like my household. It wasn't like I wanted to sit there and just play the snare drum and he yeah. was like, just, just play the snare drum. And it's like, but I have a whole drum set and then, and I like to play it and there's like, fuck you. Uh, and he's like, now you're playing a xylophone instead. And right. I was like, oh, I didn't sign up to play xylophone. Yikes. And then I had a lot of fun with the xylophone though. I think I wanted violin first. Yeah, and then they were like, "Well, there's no more violence left." I'm like, "Oh," they're like, uh, "I'm like, what's that thing? It's a saxophone." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, let's take it home." Nice. Mary had a little lamb. Rocked my first song. I think that's all I could ever play on saxophone and piano was "Mary Had a Little Lamb." That was about my extent. Everything else is mood, <laughs> mood <laughs> notes. <laughs> yeah, we can do. I can do the mood notes yeah. on the piano. No oh, those problem. Are fun. <laughs> yeah, synthesizer. Step on that sustain pedal oh, all God. day. Hang out on the moog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to get back into playing some more piano, man. I've been uh, jamming acoustic guitar. In the I remember you were COVID. saying that. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I've been fucking with. Just a little acoustic guitar. Get my I, chords stronger. I unfortunately do not have an acoustic guitar. How lame is that? And uh, I, I've been just putting off, wanting to buy one. Now, like, you know, I want to go shopping right now, but, you know, it's like they're making wait online outside and, you know, appointments. And I'm like, oh, I just don't care about this right now. I'm so out of it. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I, I, I can't buy anything off online. I just can't buy a guitar online. No, you need to play it. I, I can't. You know, it's just, it drives me nuts. You know, it's it's a big business. You know, I ain't, I ain't knocking it, but I'm just like, I just don't trust it. I almost pulled a couple triggers over quarantine, just a little yeah. boredom triggers, you know? Like, uh, and I, I couldn't do it. Uh, I've always been uh, uh, enticed by those guitars from China. You know, yeah. the cheap, cheap ones that like look like thousand dollar guitars, the relics and stuff like that. I've been really wanting to try this, but I just, once again, I just have no motivation to drop two, $300 free shipping, you know, for this thing to show up and be a piece of crap, you know? Yeah, it could get warped and yeah. just on the way to your, your house. Yeah, that, I mean, I don't know really what kind of wood they're really, I mean, they're, they're always like rosewood, uh, mahogany, uh, alder. They're always saying these terms. I'm like, no way, this can't be possible. You know? Uh, well, I mean, if have it you is... ever seen these crazy guitars that they that they mimic over there? Like they've got a Rick Nielsen. Uh, uh, I think I forget what it's called. Uh, Shame on me. Uh, the Rick Nielsen uh, guitar that looks like him. Yeah. He's got his feet. Oh man, people are gonna hate me for forgetting that. Uh, <laughs> I'll remember it. Uh, but yeah, it's wild guitar. They got the Jimmy Page relic. They've got a. Gary Moore relic. They've got all these crazy, crazy relics and stuff like that. And dude, you're just like, wow, how do they do that? How do they, how do they keep getting away with it? You know, all these patent guitars, you know? Oh yeah. Well, that's China, man. That's like literally what they do. They it's just, wild. they steal designs and they make stuff at, uh, you know, a fraction of the price and <laughs> you know, there's nothing you can do about it. No. Literally. You can not release your stuff, but right. you know, you're going to release your stuff. China's going to be able to get a hold of it. <laughs> oh, okay. I can make one of these. Shamelessly, uh, ironically, uh, alongside the East Studio Star vibe that we have, uh, we have our own brand of uh, merchandise called Accessibles, oh, which is cool. pretty cool. It's a great name. We're really psyched about that name. And, uh, you know, our, our manufacturers are over in China, and yeah. uh, we have a very close relationship with our people over there. And uh, it's been interesting. We've, we've actually been able to bring some really unique items, like we're doing everything from these types of mic stands to uh, our, our main our main thing right now, which is which kind of took off in a weird element, is that the isolation shield. Yeah, you know. So uh, some market research a couple of years ago was like, well, nobody's putting a stand with it. We we're like, oh, that's weird. You know, put the stand with it, put it in a box, and it was like, whoa, couldn't stop. Yeah, nice. I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's the SF one hundred and one kit. Uh, it's a very it's a very very cool unique item. Uh, you know, 
the amount of people out there that want to create in their home and do their own music because of the ease and accessibility of it right now is mind blowing. And oh, yeah. it's, it's, you know, very nice alternative to a, a vocal booth, you know, for lack of better words. And we have a bunch of stuff, very, very, very cool stuff. So I, I urge you to check that one out too. Yeah, I definitely will, man. That sounds like awesome. Uh, an awesome product. Those, uh, <clears throat> Those little uh, isolators, they, yeah. they work great, man. They really save a, a lot of time and for, like you were saying, for small home studios sure. and stuff like that. Man, Podcasters, you know. oh, yeah. voiceovers, uh, p- people who have just getting into it, who have never tried this before, you know, it's just such a unique thing, you know, the creativity, uh, you know. I've got my stuff at home, but boy, am I lazy, man. Yeah. I'm just... I asked Santa Claus, uh, I got from, for Christmas this year, I got a, a Tascam 424, the old one, so I could put the tapes in. Ah. Uh, Gives me a little bit more creativity. It feels like I'm a little bit more hands-on. I get So a, like when you were a teenager? Oh, yeah. I have. I still have my, I have a little four-track Tascam with yeah. the, the tape. I love it. And I, I have, th- I have, I, not thousands, hundreds. Hundreds of tapes from my past of all this cool shit. You know, it's fun to listen back to it, you know. You start getting into it for a couple hours, and you're like, you know. Okay. <laughs> Just getting it on digital is so tough, you know. But it's fun because there, there's a unique uh, sound with it and just creativity part about it you know i really wish they would just i wish i had the smarts to make my own daw that was really simple i can't stand really honestly all the extra buttons and everything like that i'm just not into it it's not my style have you tried audacity uh sure but i i wasn't sure that it was like is it audacity a daw yeah it is yeah i mean it's just the most basic digital audio workstation you get and it's free right right so the, you the, can, the, the anybody channel, can right. download okay. it for free yeah yeah uh but it's i mean it's as bare bones as you can possibly sure. get if you're yeah. looking for a really simple one yeah i i'm not interested in making you know recording music on my own yeah that would be a travesty if i got into that i i, I can't do it it's a complicated process yeah. and a lot of people dive into it head first and yeah. and and they get away with a lot you yeah. know but I'm just demo just demo this throw yeah. this down get my ideas down that's it uh, i be, i have been uh putting off recording music for years you know, just like uh, working, traveling, playing with a million different bands and stuff like that. I got really burnt out for a while. And although I, I feel as if like I was supposed to have gotten through my calm down phase and I'm supposed to be a little bit more proactive about my stuff right now, I've just been so bad about it. You know, I get such in a loop of work and coming home and being busy and putting things before it. But I've made some, I've made some honest... Uh, commitments to really try putting out some music soon you know and just nice yeah i'm really looking forward to doing it i got this band called zonked zonked yeah it's just it's my baby it's the sounds in my head it's uh driving me crazy uh not being able to put it out or hear it you know i just hear it up here you know and it's just uh it's time for everybody else to hear it nice yeah so hopefully soon I look forward to checking that kind of stuff out, man. Yeah. Uh, local music is fantastic, and you never know what you're going to get out of some local artists, and a lot of times it's really good tunes. It's really good. I'm such a big fan of everybody uh, in this town who's doing all their music. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of Stoner Dude. You know? Oh, yeah, we just had him on, too. Yeah. Stoner Dude's fantastic. Yeah. We're actually uh, um, having him back with Bong soon. Nice. And we might try to do some kind of jamola next time. Try Excellent. to kick it up a notch and get the band to actually play a song. So Excellent. we got a studio right there. I do, and we were thinking about, I mean, we have all this space, too, so right. it's like uh, <laughs> we can just like move some shit around right. and do the song a couple times, and I'll multi-track it. Totally. And, I mean, just got, it's all just sitting here. Sure. I mean, that's got the multi-track sitting right in it. Yeah. So that's, that was I remember when my parents went away, uh, they go on their Atlantic City uh, trips for like four or five days. We would kick all that shit out of the living room as fast as we could. We'd set up and we would play for hours. All right. <laughs> One of the crazy things, my, my guitar, my Marshall, always, I always used to put it by the TV and uh, the drummer, of course, loud, loud Ludwig's. I'm a huge Ludwig fan. I love the sound of Ludwig's. Uh, Ludwig's in the house, and the and the bass player is just the three of us, like Rush, and uh, 
just blowing the place up for hours. People finally knocking on the door, you know, quiet. It's like 2 a.m. I'm like, oh, such a rebel at, you know, 20, you know. But I, I remember when, you know, you know, mom and dad are coming back. You got to get everything back into the house, right? So then when I realized the TV, we put the TV on, I realized that the magnet from my head and cabinet ha- had destroyed the TV, right? So yeah. now it's a different color, right? So I put it on and I'm like, oh my God, we got hours, you know, a couple Things hours toast. before mom and dad come. And fortunately, this, at this, you know, it's kind of just faded. Oh, uh, did it? It kept fading. And fading. I mean, it took like hours. You know, I, did, I think there was a good, like, yeah, just left, like left on for like eight hours before they got home. And, uh did that like five times. <laughs> <laughs> Never learned my lesson. I had, uh, um, I was really bummed too, man, because uh, I had it all hooked up to the uh, old school Nintendo system. I had a 32 inch yes. tube TV, which is like as big as they would make them. Sure. And my dumb ass put a big cluster of speakers on the top. Yeah. I didn't know, man. Like, right? I didn't know that ruined the TV. Crazy, and, isn't it? Yeah, it's just fucking, the whole band's just warped. The right. whole TV's gotta get rid of the freaking TV. And then, you know, duck hunt guns don't work on LED TVs? What, what like a these? bunch like of these garbage. TVs? They don't work? Yeah, the You're duck hunt gun. It, oh, wow. it works off the CRT and, like, the, the dome and everything. It, like, reflects back into it. So it's, like, it's functioning with that specific type of tv wow and so you, unless you have an old school tv you can't play freaking duck that's hunt. crazy yeah i didn't know that no kidding yeah i had wow, the things that limit us in 2020 no duck hunt no us. duck hunt <laughs> well, yo i'm obsessed with video games are you yeah i know i think i heard you say something like you don't really play too much anymore or anything like that. i've been backing off because it's um it's been a practice of like not being obsessed with anything sure so I've like really hunkered down on like backing all my shit off. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, I still love video games, but like sure. uh, the whole don't I don't need to be entertained. Yeah. To exist. Sure. Concept because I get it, I get in that loop where it's like all oh, the TV's got to be on or music's got to be playing. Sure. I gotta be playing a video game or sure. something. Yeah. I'm a little bit like that. You know, I'm kind of need to stay active, otherwise I'm getting into trouble somehow. Yeah. And uh, my wife hates that when I'm in trouble, so uh, I try to stay busy. But uh, I'm obsessed with hockey on PlayStation. Oh, really? I play a tremendous amount. It's just it's my happy place. It's really my happy place. You know, I do fairly well, and we play with the live like everybody. You know, just people I'm playing in Canada and you know all over the states and everything like that. And it's such a wild concept because I've been obsessed with NHL since 1993, 94, and playing on Super NES and everything. Yeah, I remember as a kid thinking to myself, "Wow, man, imagine, imagine, imagine what it must be like to play with like your buddy down the block or something like that." You know. And now it's just like you're playing with people in Australia and Canada. It's just bizarre, you know. It is, man. And I and I absolutely love the game. I and I, playing this video game is kind of like puts me in my happy place and keeps me safe because otherwise I'm thinking about playing poker, which oh, yeah. I, I play a ton of poker. I don't know if you ever knew that, but uh, no, that's what I should have been doing this whole time is playing poker. You'd probably be phenomenal at it. I like I like poker. Texas Hold'em's my jam, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. I like all the games, but of course, Texas Hold'em is, uh, is the drug, is you, what they say. You get the most information. Yeah. And you get to see everybody doing their bullshit. Bizarre. And, and you're like, um, yeah, I got, I, I'm going to do okay here. Yeah. But, but Vegas, too, like, it's, I've sat at some tables and there's just clearly this guy is a better poker player than me, right? <laughs> right? So it's like it gets to a certain point and you're sure. like, you want to split her or yeah, what? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to beat you at heads up. You're a better poker player. Right. You've been reading me this whole game and I'm I like you can't, I can't even see my face, you know. Yeah, I try to go off uh I try to I tr- it's it's really hard to stay focused in a 4 6 to 4 to 10 hour game. Yeah. You know, I mean focusing and you know, paying attention to people's, you know, tendencies and stuff like that. I try to do my best. I, I, I kind of work more on intuition with poker. I just, I play my hand. And I, I really don't care whatever anybody else has. You know, I, if I have a good hand, I'm, I'm going for it. You yeah. Know? I win or lose, I'm going for it, you know, which is probably a bad thing to do. Uh, <laughs> but I absolutely love playing tournaments. I'm a huge tournament fan. Play a ton at South Point. But you're playing the uh, where you just do the buy in? Yeah. And everybody has the same amount of chips? Yeah. 
and they have some crazy uh, guarantee. I mean, there's and there's the, poker is kind of limited right now in Las Vegas, you know. This and it's weird because there's all the plastic dividers yeah. and the masks, and then you got the people with the f- gloves, which drives me a little crazy. It's just like, oh god, the gloves. I mean, like we're touching chips, you know, we're exchanging money constantly. It's like, I mean, they say that they're using a solution that uh, disinfects everything for about three months or something like that. I'm like, what? Like, you gotta be, what? <laughs> You're telling me that Jimmy over there who just sneezed, that stuff is killing that stuff? Well, uh, I'll take that, you know, instead of a vaccine, you know? <laughs> but, just, uh, we're just fucking use it as hand sanitizer. Sure. Yeah, our, our skin melts away. I don't have to wash my hands for three yeah. months. Bones. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, poker is a wild place. It's, it's still it's still in quarantine and poker, you know, or more or less just uh, you know keeping it social distance in there. It's it's wild. It gets a little difficult for me. I I have to wear the mask at the table. It's a little uncomfortable, you know. I don't really like it, and, and it's even weirder. Okay, because they don't let me wear my hoodie at a poker table anymore. And I kind of think I started that a long time ago before Phil Locke what? did. Yeah, because, I mean, Phil Locke obviously made it uh, famous. But I, I love the poker hoodie thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, in my, I'm in my jam. I'm, I'm in my focus. I feel like Kylo Ren. You know, I'm in my, I'm in my way, my dark space, you know? <laughs> and I want to be in this dark world when I'm playing poker. I don't want to be nice. Yeah. I'm out for mission. I'm out, I'm out for blood. <laughs> uh, but they won't let me play the, they won't let you put it on anymore because it's a security issue. Now I'm like, wow. Now you got masks over your face with everybody in the casino. You guys aren't taking, you guys aren't kind of concerned about this. Yeah. Like it's kind of weird, you know, it's. Now, of course they're concerned about it, but. You want to, you want to gamble. You got to play by our rules, you know, and there's rules. Hey, follow the rules, you know. I break the rules a little bit, but that's only where I could uh, not disrespect somebody. Yeah, yeah. The um, I don't mind the mass. I just mind not having live entertainment. You know, that's the one that thing that that really chaps my ass is yeah. having that whole community of people just sitting here disintegrating and no one cares. Absolutely sucks. Yeah, it does. The whole the whole uh, local seven twenty. You know, they're really pushing and trying to get stuff off the ground and they've been forming up some of the other unions around here and and really trying hard to get entertainment back in las vegas and it's uh, it it needs to happen soon because a lot of people are going to start falling off i mean a lot of people already have fallen off i know so many people that have left the city just because yeah there's no work and you know know, the moratoriums go up and then they got to go I mean, I, well, I don't know where else I would go right now I mean, if I was in that position, you know? Yeah. I'm just hunkering down, and I, I mean, I, it, it makes you realize uh, it's just, I, I, t- I kind of took for granted not going out enough, you know? Now it's like I really actually thrive and miss on that, that scene. Yeah. I just want to go out, just want to have a beer, and I just want to uh, hear some music. That's and, it. And maybe possibly play some music. <laughs> I would like that as well. Yeah, yeah. All the things I do for money, everything I've ever had set up is 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 not functional anymore. It's Um, on hold. Yeah, and you try to get the the bands into a studio. They got that nobody's got any money to come record. It's like rare when bands have money in general, but now with the COVID, it was like there's nothing. Sure. So it's it's dried up pretty heavily out here. It's some scary shit, man. Yeah. It's some scary shit. It's kind of interesting uh, what our town has taken on, uh, kind of some popularity in the news with our govern- governor, you know. Oh, I'm not going to tap in too much into that. I'm not a know-it-all kind of politician. I'm not one of these guys. I'm yeah. just, I don't, I try, I try not to just act like I know it all, you know. I get into a couple arguments here and there, but it's just, I'm just talking out of my heart here, you know. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, uh, come on, can we just shape this up a little bit? I mean, it'd be nice. This is like the entertainment capital of the world. Yeah. This is where it's at. And there's thousands of people here that are just dying. Yeah. And it's like, I know that you're like scared of the coronavirus or whatever. Yeah. But like, um, we don't give a shit. I'm more scared of being homeless. Yeah. Than the, getting the coronavirus. Give me yeah. the coronavirus. Just let me go back to work. I'll take a shot full if, of coronavirus to go back like to work. If it's like pox, hopefully we'll get through it. You know, maybe it won't yeah. happen again. I don't know. God knows. It's you know? ridiculous. I, I mean, 
It's, I, it's absurd. I, I don't know how I'd be able to get get it. I mean, I came from New York City, you know, yeah. I picked up some crazy shit back there, you know, S- subway systems and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, I want no part of it, and I'm very sympathetic for for any situation, anybody, or anything like that. I I hate to hear about it. I don't. It's a bad dream. It really is, man. It <laughs> or really a is. shout out to Stoner, dude. The pandemic, you know. Yeah, exactly. The I plan-demic. love it. I love it. Yeah, he's amazing, man. Yeah. Stoner, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having him on too, man. We're going to jam and play bass with him. I haven't Good. played bass in a while. What are you guys so. going to play? Some bong stuff. Some bong stuff. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do some bong stuff. Yo, those lyrics in that new album. I like because they make some good videos, you know. Because it's it's a good thing about Bond that there's a message there, you know. What I mean, yeah, there's a good message there uh, that should be heard, you know. And uh, I I, t- I tell Stoner all the time, and those lyrics are good. Him and his brother, right? That's his brother. Yeah, He's phenomenal. Oh, dude, phenomenal. I love that band, yeah. and they're so much fun to uh, see live. Yeah, and uh, and I'm stoked to hop on the bass and play with them for a couple. Excellent. So we'll see how that goes down. When are you gonna do that soon? Soon, yeah. yeah, yeah. Probably the next batch. Of, probably the next batch of episodes that I'm doing. Nice. Um, I just got the the disc in the mail, and I was like, uh, Yeah, I, I, this kind of needed to happen so that we I can not ever miss a Monday because consistency. Totally. Yeah, that's the number one thing. I don't want to be inconsistent. Oh my God, I got a uh, I got to thank you on that album. I can't oh, yeah. believe it. I mean, there's there's not a lot. I mean, I know he could thank. You know, I'm sure he wants to thank everybody. I was very honored to get a thank you on that album. I uh, I sold him the pair of speakers from E Studio Star to, ah. get, to get his demos up and running. Nice. I was very very uh, happy that he's, he's such a kind guy. You know, he's the nicest dude ever, man. So much fun to play with. Oh yeah. Yeah. We jammed a couple of days ago. We had a, a secret secret quarantine jam oh fun at uh, Secret Studios here in Las Vegas uh, with Marky. You know Marky. Glam, glammy, Marky. I don't know. Yeah. I probably do. He's a, you can't miss him. Face guy. Yeah, I'm a face guy. Yeah, he he actually uh, whenever we're planning because uh, we did like a uh, birthday party recently for somebody, and uh, you know played out you know Van Halen style Van Halen style out in the backyard played some music and neighbors are knocking on the fence going turn it down like, come on man live music free music come on. But uh, yeah, played some music with Stoner Dude the other day and got out the jams, kicked out the jams. And we played some uh, fun stuff just just for the fun of it. It was a great great weekend, and it's it's fun to play. You know, I, I I'm I love playing my guitar. I love playing rock and roll. It's just I need to find more motivation. It's very difficult for me. I'm, I'm I love I love my job a lot. I put a lot of time and effort to it. I love being there. I'm, I never I never hate my job. I love being a part of it. Huh. I come home and there's just other things to do. I'm really interested in poker. I take up a lot of time. So I, I like to do a lot of stuff. It's just, you know, I do miss the flexibility right now of getting people together easily and, uh, you know, making it happen. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's rough, man. It's really rough. And when you can't go and, like, put on shows and make money and, and it's like everybody relies on that to sure. pay their bills, it's really, really, it hurts a lot. And just like the the whole point of uh, rehearsing and practicing for me, I mean, like if I'm rehearsing a set, it's because I have a, a show to play. Sure. And so there's always the next gig that you're going to be playing and right. the set of songs that you're going to be jamming. Yeah. And it's like, well, there's there's not that, so yeah. I don't pick my bass up because it's like I don't care. Uh, I mean, actually, it's kind of nice to not be messing with it. Sure. But uh, like I, like I said, I've been doing the acoustic thing. Uh, we got. A tribute for my buddy Carl Hampton, who passed away yes. at the beginning of this, and uh, I'll be doing three songs. Great, so, great dude. Um, yeah, I love Carl Hampton. He he changed my whole life, man. I think I heard that because I I I think I said that I don't I think that I don't know if you said something online about that. Or maybe you did, or maybe you didn't. But maybe I didn't. He's got that effect on people. Yeah. He he did me a favor. He did me a big favor when I first got here. It just I was like. I didn't know what to do when I got here and somehow I got his name and number and he put me to work for a day, you know, and it just, it really helped. He helped me bridge a couple things and everything like that. It, it was, and then the Aerosmith, you know, factor. And when we did the Aerosmith show, we, we wanted to play a couple songs together. And uh, I, I was honored to play with him, you know, he's just a great, good dude. Oh know? yeah. Uh, and he was him. a fantastic singer. Yeah. Totally, I miss him too. Total rock star. Yeah, he, he he did the same thing for me, man. He presented me with an opportunity. Yeah. And I jumped all over that opportunity and it I mean, geez, it doubled my annual income and sure. 
it uh i and it, all of a sudden i have health insurance and i'm traveling around the world and wow it's all because carl saw something in me yeah. and he was like this dude doesn't need to be hanging out in clubs mixing bands for the rest of his life you know and, um i never would have gone for that like wow. i would never would have been like oh i'm gonna be this corporate guy sure um but then once i found myself in that position i was like this is actually a really sweet gig totally. i really like I, I like it and i i, I dove in his you know deep as i could and sure it was a it was a really great opportunity it's one of those uh things that they taught us in school which is uh you never know who is going to present you with your next career opportunity your next job opportunity sure. because uh, you just don't know who that person is and yeah. he was just when i met carl you know he was a, a singer in in a, a cover show right sure. and then just doing cover stuff uh a lot of Earl Smith songs he loves singing Aerosmith. totally uh, but I didn't know him from anybody, but I, when you're on my stage, I treat you like a rock star. And sure. that is just like my game, you know, like I was like, how are the monitors? And if you say they're okay, I go, well, the okay, isn't good. So let's right. get them good. You know, like, sure. they're like, oh, you're going to, you're going to take care of me. And <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah, I'm going to take care of you, totally. bro. You're on my stage. Yep. Um, and that was like when I spent. Uh, an equivalent amount on monitors on my PA system as I did on the front of house because I was like, I'm not going to be messing around. I'm like, I know that I can get the speakers to sound good. Yep. I was like, but I got to make sure this band is happy. So Sure. You've yeah. always given everybody that respect. Yeah. And yeah. it ended up being, you know, me being nice to him later down, like a year later plus, you know, all of a sudden he's just like, hey, uh, you know, I need an audio engineer. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's just fucking whole life, whole world opened up wow. to me, you know. That's great. Just being nice to somebody. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Always be nice to people. Yeah. So you went around the world and stuff like that? I mean, you know, Canada and shit. Sure, like sure. That, yeah, you know, yeah, I get yeah. to leave the country for a second. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but fun. there's there's a lot of uh, world traveling gigs that are available that I've been getting, I've been working my way towards. Sure. Trying to get into some shows yeah. and, and stuff where they, they do get flown, you know, around the world. Yeah. But, uh but yeah, getting flown all over the country and Canada was it was really cool. Yeah, and uh, it's just cooler to say around the world whenever you're doing it. Totally. Right? Uh, yeah, it was. It's it's some of the most amazing experiences, and and yeah, it's I would love for world traveler. I love to get it back. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I never got. I used to, to travel with Twisted Sister. Do you oh yeah, that? yeah. I used to tech for them. Uh, guitar tech roadie i call it a roadie i was i was never like a good like electric like tech tech you know I, yeah i i use that word loosely with twisted sister you know <laughs> we were a family you know we were just like get the family together let's make this work you know but uh it's it, it would, i'll tell you it was some of the best things in the world to be able to travel like that and just see the world at somebody else's expense and get to make money at it and have fun doing it and yeah, that was a wild time, man, doing those things, you know, really wild. But uh, like I said, I use the word tech loosely. <laughs> Roadie. Change strings, change the guitars, pack yeah. the shit up and go, you know. I mean, what what, what do you really got to do as a guitar tech, right? i tell you a, a funny story I told somebody the other day. I ran into this moment. I think I was in Hungary, and uh, one of the saddles broke on Eddie's guitar, on his main guitar. And, of course, we don't have an extra don't have anything in the pot in the pockets got nothing in the cases nothing in, in the guitar cases nothing and i am calling all these mom and pop shops in hungary trying to figure out who's got some floyd rose tremolo stuff i'm like the third call this one guy finally calls me up and i'm panicking really because if he doesn't have this guitar he's, it's just going to be a it's going to be bad for me it's going to be bad for I mean, it's not my fault you know what i mean but still it's just figure it out you know so i got this guy went into the city and he pulls out one out of his toolbox i was like i can't believe that's the one and I told him about it after the show. He's like, what? <laughs> Guitar player was like, are you kidding me? I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah. That was my, that was my, that was my tech, my tech extent, which was save the system. day. Yeah. Save the day. Yeah. yeah. Talking about saving the day. Uh, I just spoke to D recently and oh, uh, cool. he is really honestly just a good guy. You know, he's, he's he always has been always a really good guy. He's never been, you know, anything else but that. But, uh, you know, we were talking about that show because I had lined up to play guitar with him for a couple, couple, couple gigs. It wasn't a big long tour, but before that, uh, I was teching, right? So I'm teching, and I know I'm about to go into play, but I wasn't 
playing this night when we got to Sturgis. So I'm the only guy with the manager who showed up at Sturgis in like 2015, I think, or something like that. And I set the whole thing up, beard, sweating, everything. I got my shorts on, got all my stuff. But for some reason, I, I remember having my gear with me because I think we were traveling. I was playing recently, uh, soon after that. Long story short, uh, bass player gets stuck in L.A. and can't get on any flight out of L.A. to Sturgis. It's, it's all done. He got on the last flight at like 9 and showed up as we were on stage. Long story short, I had to go up and play bass for the show. That's now, I look, awesome. I look into this like crowd. It's, it's like a big rodeo pit, that Buffalo Chip place in Sturgis. And I'm like, I didn't think anything of it. I had no clue I was playing that day. I, I had no clue. I, mean, I set the whole thing up. I gaffed the whole thing. I love, boy, do I love my gaff tape, man. I love my clean stage. You know, that, that's where I, I have a lot of fun on production is just the cleanliness and making sure it's perfect. You know, I love that element of rock and roll on stage, you know, which oh, is clean, yeah. you know. Uh, but the manager comes in and he's like, yep. He's like, uh, you got your bell bottoms on you? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, grab a bass you're playing tonight. I'm like, what? <laughs> There's a lot of people out there, man. I, I, and I didn't, you know, I just transcribed everything from guitar to bass. I, I didn't practice any of this bass stuff. I just went up there and just winged it. And uh, that was saving the day. And he, he, D, D always says I saved the day. He was always, like, very thankful of that, you know. So that was one of my favorite moments with D, is being able to play that show. You know? That's awesome. I mean, after that, I was kind of like, I, I can I can die happy. You know? <laughs> I almost got to play for TS once. Oh yeah, yeah. I was in the wings. I mean, I was always a tech, but there was an opportunity where it was possible maybe uh, Eddie might not have showed up, and I was like inside. I'm like, oh, I got my fingers crossed. I'm like, Dude, please. you know, whacking. You know, Germany. Oh, you were out at whacking yeah. for that too. Oh, that, that they broke the record that year. One hundred ten thousand oh. people. Wow. And I had practice. I didn't tell anybody about it in Vegas. I didn't tell anybody about it because I was like, don't say anything about it. Don't say anything and just pray that it happens. I mean, just to put that on my, you know, bucket list. You know that I did that. One the, the base roadie uh, Russell. He got to play for Twisted full show in uh, in another place in uh, Netherlands, I think. And his luck, unfortunately, downpour. I mean, wicked tropical storm in like Europe, like oh, coming down on him for that show. Got to make it through the yeah. show. Yeah, but the night, uh, the night we were in Wack in Germany, there was they broke the attendance record. It was one hundred ten thousand people. I had never seen anything like that. And as a roadie, I'm just like, ah, oh. because you got to do a sound check. And you play anything. I used to play like uh, Cat Scratch Fever always because it's a great riff to play for the for sound guys. I just like the A's and everything like that. And the crowd would just lose it. And hearing like 100,000 people root for a roadie was like, <laughs> let's go out. Let's rock, you know. We did sound checks all the time. The band never did a sound check in 20 years that I ever, ever, ever with Twisted Sister. They, they never did a sound check. Yeah, they got that. It was crazy. Twisted Sister. It was great. Very, very proud to have worked with that crew you know we'd have to do those 30 minute changeovers over in europe you know like 30 minute everything lights monitors sound everything I mean, we pre-hook up some, most of the stuff during the day that festival yeah. style but that was such a thrill as such an adrenaline rush flipping those stages over and getting the band ready so that when they showed up they were ready it was so great one of the best best gigs i ever worked i, I used to love it yeah, that shit is fun. Yeah. I love doing festivals and stuff like that where you're just like getting through bands. Even if I'm on the stage, if I'm yeah. out front, it doesn't matter, man. And the, it's and fun. the European, the European vibe. Oh, God, those festivals, they're better than drugs. They're, 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 <laughs> they are the best things ever. I mean, they turned me on to so much music and the, the, the camaraderie, you know, everything like that. The room, the room to be able to work and switch things over and everything like that and the sound systems they used and their production and their teamwork i mean just the best you know moscow not so much <laughs> <laughs> moscow is like eh, eh. We build Riser uh, when ready, you know? I'm like, no, we build Riser now. We build Riser now. You know, we got to go, you know? No problem. No problem. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, uh, that's hilarious, awesome. yeah. man. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was amazing. Yeah, it just, I, I, I used to love tour life. But you know what was weird for me? Like, uh, uh, 
tour life for me is that it never like it never went over to like other bigger gigs you know it's only because i like i still went to the rock you know yeah i rock you know i went to the rock but i was like lucky enough to have like this gig you know to work with like a cool band and like travel the world and bring my wife out to a couple different places you know just like live you know yeah super super cool you know so but i always had that rock thing in the back pocket bouncing in and out of bands and shit like that you know so I wanted to rock, man. I wanted to rock forever. That's all I ever wanted to do, you know? But, you know, I know the game, you know? And that's kind of why I'm, I'm actually kind of really content and happy in life right now with my job, you know? I'm really happy, you yeah. know? It's just because, like, I just, I want to I wanna be able to, you know, live, you know? I want to be able to not worry. I used to worry a lot. I mean, I was... 90 pounds wet trying to find peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for 20 years, you know? <laughs> My wife, uh, she bought me a salad the first time we met her, you know? And she was like, you know, she's like, you want, you want some of this? I'm like, yeah. You know? It's like, yeah, I'm hungry. I'm starving, you know? Uh, I miss those days, uh, you know? I miss it, you know? I feel like they're coming back for everybody. I see everybody doing these cool, you know, Rock shows, you know, with like the kind of the drive-in vibe and everything like that. That's yeah. that's cool, right? I mean, uh, I got to give a shout out to my buddy Nick Perry. He's a guitar player, Nick Perry and the Underground Thieves. He's doing all these crazy shows and everything like that. Playing Is he? With, yeah, playing with like the Struts, uh, doing some other bands. I, I forget the other bands that he's. I think Blackberry Smoke. Is that what they're called? Uh, Blackberry. Oh, forgive mm -hmm. me. I'm so sorry. Uh, great blues rock band. Uh, are they streaming or are they actually playing shows playing, at drive-ins? Playing shows like at drive-ins, like actual people showing up and stuff like that. And it's like, cool, you know? Do it. And a production too. Like I'm seeing this production stuff, stages and everything like that. So, you know, people are doing it. I don't know why we're not doing it out here. I mean, we've got all this land, this not desert allowed. land. Yeah, but, you know, come on, put some gloves on. I know. Put those masks on, you know? And it's like, oh, well, we can just go set up and play, but it's like the second you advertise for that show, right? you know, you're gonna, you're, you're screwed. The fines, I guess, right? Yeah, you're going to get fined, and the show's going to get shut down. I heard down. some guy that was here in town a while ago got fined like $3,000 for putting on his, uh, his, his event, but, I mean, $3,000 yeah. of production. Hell, oh, God. That's all your profits. If you're lucky, you're making three thousand dollars doing a show that size. You know, like it's, it's brutal. I'm sorry. I, I feel so bad. You know, I really do. I, I hate that anybody's dealing with this. Yeah, it's just not. It's not cool to like totally have a shutdown to the point where, I, I mean, it seems like entertainment's basically all that's left. The rest of the world is completely opened up. Sure. But like everybody that spent their whole life building a career in entertainment's just screwed. Right. Oh, I mean, goodness gracious, uh, the amount of people that we both know, including yourself, and I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's bad. So. Yeah. Hopefully they uh, stop playing this bullshit game after the election. You know, it seems like they're going to just screw us until the election. And let's get it over fingers with. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Let's get it over with. Yeah. Either it's way. It's going to be here quick. It's, yeah. My it's wife's like, uh, yeah, up. it's a long time. A long time before we get that. <laughs> it's a long time. It's a month away. It's a month away. Let's go. Yeah. You know? And uh, By the time this is airing, it'll be probably like three weeks away. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm kind of, uh, I'm curious to see what happens. Look, I'll say it right now, you know, uh, whatever it is, que sera, sera, right? Yeah. Whatever it is, it is. We continue to move on. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who is there, okay? It matters that we, as U.S. citizens, get up every day and keep this country going. Yeah. Work, move, pay some bills, spend some money, support everything, and just go out there and be a human being. That's it. That's all we could do. That's it. I mean, I mean, I'm totally down. I I like to listen to my wife talk about the conspiracy. She's into all that stuff. Uh, if I go down those rabbit holes, I will never come out of those things. But she likes a, a lot of good stuff, and uh, I I'm always in the corner listening. Yeah, what's going on? Then I, I I like a good conversation. I, I won't start any wacky conversations right now about rabbit holes or anything like that. But you know, I just I'm looking forward to it. Okay, sera sera. That's it. Let's yeah. let's just do it. You know. It'll be nice. It'd be a lot of pressure off a lot of people's backs. If, I hope either either or. Again. I hope I hope it just returns to normal. It, yeah, me too, man. Either way, whoever gets elected, it's like just open this shit back up so we all don't fucking die. But uh, yeah. that's that's the game they're playing, right? They, yep. They're gonna they're gonna play that game all the way to the burger, the last friggin' second. 
Uh, 2021 starts with Kylo Ren flying in on a ship. Right. <laughs> starts with uh, hundreds of thousands of people that are recently homeless because nobody cares about them, and they right. uh, they start tearing down government buildings. That'd be fantastic. Right. You know, I just to tap into Star Wars for a second, I'll tell you a funny story. I grew up in a household where if I don't know where Chewbacca was from or what planet he was from, I was like slapped on the wrist. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I'm terrible at all that stuff. I just like Star Wars. I want to put it out there in the world that, yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, I love it. And uh, I used to get in trouble, you know, from uh, brothers who uh, would say, you don't know this, you don't know that, you know. I just, I enjoy it a lot. You know? Yeah, and knowing where Chewbacca is from is is kind of a hard one because they never mention it in the trilogy, right? Okay, like you well, have to read books. And I like, wish I knew that answer when he when I got first got asked it. You know, yeah, I would have used that answer. They don't mention that that uh, Chewie's from Kashyyyk until the prequels. Can I just say, you know, that the Solo movie? Okay. I like that movie. Okay, because I remember, I think yeah. I heard somebody on your film say they did, uh, on your A lot podcast, of people don't like I don't understand a lot of that now, stuff. Now, here's the thing. I'm like not your Star Wars aficionado. Yeah. I'm not that. I just enjoy it, but, uh, and I love Kylo. You know, the whole rep he gets, he has like a whiny kid, like kind of yeah. like me, you know, just pissed off little brat. You know, I love it. Uh, but like, I love Solo, and that scene where they first met, first off, the scene how uh, Solo got his name, that was great. Oh, wait. When How- the, I think the Imperial guy gives it to him and names him because he's like, he doesn't know, like he doesn't know what name to give him. And the guy, I think the Imperial like guy working the desk, the clerk he's- is like, oh, what's your name? He's like, uh, I don't have a name. He's like, oh, you're solo. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's cool. An Imperial guy named him. I hope I'm saying that right. God forbid. Uh, but then, then, then when he meets Chewie, you know, like, you know, like, I'm like, that's cool. You yeah. Know? I dug it, you know? I thought it was great. I, I wanted to see Chewie happen. I wanted to see him win the Millennium Falcon from Lando Calrissian, and I wanted him to fix the um, the discrepancy when he says, uh, what is it? I completed the uh, the run in so many parsecs. Okay, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm, they, o- I'm okay with that. I'm they gonna... fixed that discrepancy in the movie, which oh. I was stoked about. Okay. Right? Cause... See, I don't even know the extent of those like little quirks. You know? Oh, yeah. I'm not as good as that. You know? A parsec's a unit of distance, not a measurement of time. <laughs> and so they were referring to a parsec as a measurement of time. Interesting. In the original one, which yeah. is just a... You know, George Lucas not doing his sure, research on astrophysics or whatever when, course, when yeah. he's writing. Uh, and so all the, the nerds were all up his ass about that. <laughs> and then, uh, and then yeah, they fixed it in the solo one because the, the, okay, that freaking quantum thing or whatever. Interesting. Am I mixing up Guardians of the Galaxy? So he did too? it one way and, and the fans reported tone. it. And then, yeah. then he like, an ode to the fans, he, he put that in there. Okay. Yeah, they fixed that part too, which I was just like, yeah, they, they gave you everything in that movie. Good. They give you everything. You know that theory, of, you ever, do you ever see that YouTube video about the theory about Jar Jar being the supreme leader? I love that. It's my, that's the only way that oh. I perceive the prequels. Oh, man, that was wild. Yeah. I, I was like, I was like, no way. Like, this can't be true. Yeah, he's a graphic. Why is his mouth moving? Like, you know, yeah. it's not real. Oh, my God. Why are they doing this? You know, <laughs> I, I, I spent a couple hours investing into that for a while. And, uh, you know, but my favorite is, uh, God, what is it called? See, this is how bad I am. I can't remember shit. I'm getting old. Yeah, getting old is rough. Revenge man. of the Sith. Oh, yeah, that's your favorite? That scene when they come in and they go into the fight. The beginning scene. When oh, the opening out. sequence. Yeah, I was so stoned the first time I saw that. <laughs> and I, I saw it by myself and I was like sitting there and I was just like, <gasps> I was like, yeah, that was so powerful, you know? Yeah. It's like, And I, you know, you knew that this is when Darth was coming. I was like, oh, this is cool. You know? Yeah. I, I like it. I just, I'm, I'm a fan of it all. That's all. The, um, the, the fighter scenes in space on those prequels are pretty badass. Like totally badass. that the whole movies are just a CGI mess, but it's like, sure. That that's what a fighter sequence is. Yeah, it's a CGI in, mess. And when so they're like, we got this one down. Yeah, totally. When they're flying in and they get in there before the, you know, the shield closes and everything like that, they crash yeah. land. I was like, Oh man, cool. 
I was such a dick when I watched that because he's like, uh, oh, I'll just shoot the panel right next to the shield and the shield will open up. I was like, that's a convenient place for that to be. <laughs> Fucking great, uh, great, great pre-planning on that one. <laughs> yeah. Works out for the movie, though. That's for I'm sure. I'm easily fooled. I'm a, uh, I'm a gullible and just there for the ride. I'm there for the ticket price, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, try to, I try to get through them that way where it's just like I'm not going to tear this thing apart. I wish it's a kid's movie and it's for fun. Yeah. I wish I loved the video games more. Some of them are really good. But some the, of them are terrible. The difficulty level for me is bizarre. Like, I can't. Oh, yeah. yeah I, just, I, I mean, I just start thinking about hockey. I'm just like, oh, go back to hockey. Blades of Steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blades of Steel. God, that was good. That was my jam on NES, bro. Totally, man. I still have a copy of that. Oh, do you really? Oh, yeah. You have the original? You have the console? Yeah. Oh. I rebuilt one. Okay. So that uh, we'll it, make it'll, a play date it'll for function. That. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll see if I can get it to turn on when Sick. we go upstairs. Or when we, when we wrap this thing up, man. I got it upstairs. Uh, yeah, we just go in and you replace the card reader. Right. So you just crack the, the console open and it's like nothing, dude. The thing's made out of like a nickel and a fucking gum wrapper. Right. And uh, you, you, you just pull the cartridge reader off of the motherboard and yeah. put a new one in. It's like 60 cents. Sure. And uh thing works. It fucking pops every game up brand new. My best buddy from, uh, my mate from Oz. I've known this guy for 20 years, way before social media. We're just talking about Kiss. Me and him all online chatting about Kiss. He's awesome. Matty C. He's a computer guy like you and just knows everything. And He put all the, uh, all the old games I forget what they call it on a Mac, you know, like a like a, a, a sim or a yeah, uh, exactly. There's a specific word for it. There is a specific word for it, but I'm terrible at this shit. Oh, I can't think of it. It's either. gonna pop to me eventually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, once you stop thinking about it, totally. Audio. He puts it all on the on the computer. Emulator. Emulator. There it is. Boom. <laughs> My brain still works. Yes, totally. Oh God, uh, emulator. It's such a yeah. It's, exactly, that's the word for it. So whenever I just want to have some fun, play some old stuff. I like that. Yeah, yeah. it's great. But you know what I saw online recently too. Speaking of um, emulators, because I've been I was jamming the original Ocarina of Time on an emulator, and then I saw a thing where someone's rebuilding that whole game with Unreal Engine. I don't know what that is. Oh, the Zelda from Nintendo 64. Oh, really? Yeah, the first Nintendo 64 Zelda oh, Ocarina shit. of Time where it's like the, the whole open world format and you get the horse and it's just like probably one of the best Zeldas. I yeah. Mean, for me, it's the best Zelda. Wow. And uh, the not, remake That's not the original great. one, right? That's not their first one. Not the, not the just regular Zelda on uh, NES. Yeah. Uh, there was actually several of them before it got to the N64 version. Whoa. There was a bunch of Zeldas that came out. Have you um, seen that uh, f uh, document documentary on? Uh, I think it's called Game Over or something like that. Or it's on Netflix. Yeah. Do you do the Netflix thing at all? Uh, for two more weeks, I two do. Two more weeks. There's a I there's a documentary on there for the uh, all the games and everything like that. Super Nintendo and Atari and you know, yeah. all that stuff and the arcade games and there's some great stories. You know, and you got to be a little wild and trying a couple different substances to come up with shit like that. Like, <laughs> you know, you got to be thinking outside the box. And these guys, you know, the whole J Japan thing with uh, Nintendo, I mean, the marketing and how they translated it into America and everything like that. Wild. It's a great, great, great series. You should watch it. Oh, yeah. I yeah. definitely have to check that shit out. Yeah, it was really interesting what was happening in the early, in the 80s and stuff yeah. with, with games. I used to love, do you remember ColecoVision? Yeah. Oh, that I had was a good. ColecoVision. That was good. Uh, Vex, I think, I think it was either Vex or Zaxxon. You remember Zaxxon, the game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was good. I, I remember the name of the game. Uh, there was also another thing we had. It was a, a TV, Vextron, I think it was called. Vextron. I could be wrong. I'd have to Google that. Uh, it was a TV, and without any cartridges in it, it had like an Asteroid game. But then we could put the football in, and then you could put like uh, colored uh, vinyl in front of it, like these clear see-through things that were on the screen. Oh, and really? And you would be able to play games with that. It was really? wild. I think it's called Ve Vextron. Yeah, we had a box. It was like a black like a black little screen and it had yeah. a, a little flat brick controller that, with like four it. buttons and a joystick. What's that's that called? What you're talking about, right? Yeah. Do you remember the name of that? No, but that's, that's I, I you're, yeah. the way you're describing, I'm like, that sounds like the box I had uh, when I was a kid. I was addicted to that. 
dude that thing is tight i remember Ooh. there's like a jet game where you're flying and it's just like oh it's yeah. just white lines right like totally. everything's just made out of white lines oh, and two -dimensional. so good it was the best so good yeah i i remember that thing's really well when i was playing hockey in 94 and super nes i mean the the the, co the competition and the, and, the, and the tournaments that we would do in our bedrooms i mean 94 uh, i think i no no I, I think i started smoking pot about 95 but i remember for the first time playing i was like oh my god you know but we i mean we'd be playing yeah 94 that's right i did uh because that's when they won the cup and ranges so i was definitely smoking pot uh <laughs> but i mean hours and hours and hours i used to say as a kid like Imagine playing with like somebody far away. Like, what a concept, you know? Oh yeah, I, I just love it. I'm enamored with it. You know, it's pretty fascinating. Like, I have the uh, the PS4 VR. Yeah. And so I'll go in and I'll play with someone else on that, and Ooh. it's like whenever you're like in the world space and you look over at the guy and there's like a full representation of a human body, and you're like, that's another person. That's crazy. It's really a trip. Does it throw off your balance at all, kind of thing, or uh, is it that type of thing? Yeah. yeah. So the the I it's the first generation of of VR, right? So, um. It does do the whole um, nausea thing pretty heavily. Anything that you're getting where you're like pushing on a joystick to maneuver a character through yeah. the virtual reality space, it gets pretty nauseous. Oof. But uh, I, dude, I got some drama mean sitting next to the PlayStation. So oh shit! If I'm gonna if I'm gonna try to get down on like, like I bought a bunch of I bought a bunch of games with it uh, and like stuff like um, Skyrim and shit sure, like that yeah, yeah, and yeah. now i realize it's like you'll never beat skyrim in vr because wow. you're gonna throw up way too much you know you're gonna just be like i because i can handle about 15 20 minutes in the vr space with a joystick that's crazy but then i gotta get out you gotta set timers for yourself because if you stay in too long like for the, f the first day i got it right i got it as a christmas present it was like boom we got a vr system <laughs> yeah and uh, and we're playing and playing and playing and then all of a sudden i'm on my back for like an hour just like oh get me a ginger ale do you have to like clear out the whole living room and get this on an eight by eight space oh man yeah uh, it's not too bad i love the videos of everybody just fucking up and just yeah. shh, something breaks and everything like that falling over and like ah, boom. You know? oh dude everybody dude. yeah people fall over a lot with it because it's, it's like they're like oh shit. Like shit equilibrium right it's just all messed up yeah it catches you out of nowhere man uh especially if like you put them on the batman game and then they're looking down at some oh, at the city yeah, and the it, dream. it really feels real when you i mean like your visual perception of it, it your brain accepts that information as is real sure or like um <laughs> yeah, it does one of my favorite things that happens um i'll be playing a plane game right like there's this jet yes. fighter game and uh and when you look down in the vr space there's like a pair of legs uh, that are just animated there but like you associate those for a little s second as your legs until like you move your legs and you don't <laughs> see those move and you're just like but when you look down for a second you're like oh those are my legs uh, no they're not and you move your legs real quick but i was like oh look at my brain's just accepting this yes. stuff it just accepts it yep so quickly yep makes me think of uh what else I'm accepting around me that wow. might not, not be real, you know, sure. but, um, that we're just like, oh, yeah, that's just that's just real. Right. right. And right. it's like, oh, man, I mean, it's it, it takes on the, the shape of these digital forms really fast. So oh, yeah. you just accept that reality, too. Uh, so it's like I just accepting a reality doesn't seem to be. It realistic. Just, it just shoots right through your brain. It's yeah, funny. That's man. Wild. I don't, I've never tried it. I haven't tried that yet. Not really? Yet. No. If you hang out for a second afterwards, I'm going to be fucking flipping this whole mess around, yeah. man. I'll turn it off for you. Nice. I'm, I'm, I love showing it to people. Excellent. I, I never play it unless I show it to someone. Really? And then I'll be like, oh, now I'm going to play VR That's the same tonight. thing for Wii. Remember Wii? Yeah. God. People are like, what? I've never played Wii. I'm like, hold on. Oh, Wii's Get tight. ready. Here we go. Uh, the baseball, the yeah. golf, I mean, everything. The bowling. How how epic is the bowling? Oh, I know, right? Have you ever gotten a 300 in Wii bowling? No, not, no, okay. not 300. So, like, you know, my nephews, of course, were like 300 all the time, you know, but, you know, adults, <laughs> I guess. Even, like, 15 years ago, adults uh, have a hard time. So I get up to my last one. And my nephew's like, everybody, Keith's about to roll. He's about to bowl for his 300. He's about to bowl for his 300. And I'm like, you Gutter ball. are such a dick. Yeah. And I missed it. I was like, <laughs> of course. Jerk. All the pressure. Love you, kid. Yeah. But uh, uh, I never got my 300. No, oh, you'll have to just get a, You have to get an old Wii going I'm until you can get it. I'm obsessed with the Wii music. Okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like... 
I mean, how long ago did that shit come out? 20? Is it 20 years now? We? Or is it 15? We? I'd say like, yeah, 15. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I remember being on tour and just doing tour things, you know, and just <laughs> we and hotel rooms and wherever we stayed. I just, I li- left that music on. It was so such a trance. I slept through it. It was the only thing that made me comfortable for years was the we sound. You know, the, really? Yeah. It, 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 when it's on, it's my happy place. It's just such a, such a weird melody that just makes me so happy. Yeah, it is a lot of like nice, bright notes that are mixed really smoothly to where they don't have harshness to them. Or they're the like best that. at it. They do they do great it's stuff. It's like a bunch of like twinkly, but it has a lot of mid range to it. Yep. Yeah. Do you remember that you could create like your wee faces and all? You know, oh yeah, the right? me's. Yeah, and do you remember the custom ones that like? There, there's a whole website dedicated to like Kiss. I mean, the whole website shows how you can create Kiss, Alice Cooper, uh, oh. Barack Obama, and all the you know people at the, the famous people at the as time. your me as your me. And I made hundreds of them like on that thing. I've got all the Kiss ones, man. I made That's Paul. Awesome. I mean, and it's wild because like you know Nintendo knows they 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 go deep. They go hard in the paint with like secret shit. You know what I mean? Like stuff oh, yeah. you could do. You know. So I was. Always made me happy to make like custom, custom me's. You should look that up. They're great. I'll definitely check that so out. Man. My Alice Cooper one is great. Oh really? Peter Chris one is my favorite, man. It looks perfect, like Peter Chris. I had um I had a Wii down here for a while just to do Wii golf. Yeah. And because um, I I'm a fan of virtual golf. Totally. But uh I I don't like to play with the control. I like to play with the motion controller. Sure. If I'm gonna play virtual golf it's 2020 uh but so i've been doing tiger woods on the wii forever and they they didn't transfer over anything for playstation 4 so like you have the motion controllers and it's like playstation 3 has a bunch of golf games but you can't play them on the playstation 4 um and and it's like you guys suck yeah they the playstation did have that controller right yeah they have they have the the motion controller controller, right uh, but so they just stopped supporting it for a second, just like sure. Xbox stopped supporting yeah, the, they're, the they're Connect. Yeah, they're like, oh, we don't feel like working on it anymore. Yeah. Do you have an Xbox? Uh, no, I'm a PlayStation for life. Yeah, so like the Xbox had the Connect camera, which is like right. a three-dimensional camera you can yes. control everything with, and you can play video games with. Yep. So the 360 version was flawless. I mean, I'm sure this is, but yeah. it, was, it was amazing. I remember it trying do. it. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty wild. And uh, I was playing games with it, and, and I was controlling my whole TV with it and everything. And then the... The Xbox One comes out, and I get the Xbox One Connect, and it's like, and we don't support this device at all. It's like, right. why did I spend two hundred dollars on this camera? Yeah, the old hook and bait. Yeah, and it's like literally you're calling customer service, and they're just like, yeah, we're not supporting that Connect no. thing anymore. And uh, thanks for your money, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that yeah. kind of shtick. So, yeah. Anyways, the PlayStation finally came out with a virtual reality golf, which is dope. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's pretty cool. So I, I'll break that out every once in a while, okay. and then like just leave it on, and I can put the headset on. Sure. And hit a hole. Yeah. Every once in a while, while I'm kind of going about my business. Yeah. My dad plays golf. He's got the new uh, 2K golf, 2K21. Oh, cool. I think, and apparently, it's uh, pretty f- phenomenal. But uh, I have every hockey game. From '94, I have every single one. That's the one and only disc I buy every year. Oh hockey. yeah, I have every single one, man. They're That's the awesome. best. Yeah. I, at one time, my dream was to get the cover guy sign everyone, but that's a big goal, dude. Who's got the time for that? Yeah, you got to be going to a lot of hockey games. Yeah, or is that? I remember. I remember a couple of years ago, about five years ago, you could send in your request to Tampa Bay Lightning for all the guys by mail. Just please sign something for me, and they would do that for you. Oh, that's, that's cool. a fact. Yeah, they used to do that for my buddy. That's cool. I was like, oh, that's when I got the idea. I was like, oh, maybe I should get Stamkos to sign this. I was like, nah. <laughs> I got other things to do. I want to rock today. Yeah, you know, you can get obsessed with that kind of stuff, and then all of a sudden it's taken away from your actual life, which sure. is like, I've been I've been packing stuff up and getting ready to sell a bunch of useless shit that I've been collecting my whole life yeah. that just sits and collects dust, and like, yeah, I like the stuff, but uh, of course now um, more than ever, you know, it's like we need we need money and, and you got to sure. sell that shit to make money, but also I don't need that stuff there. Like I'm, then I'm in there twiddle yes. fucking around yeah. and not in the studio when I should be working on some music or sure. something or working on a video or. It's all this, this, yeah, it, it distracts. I love to sell stuff online. Uh, it's yeah. such a thrill. It's so, so much fun to get the deal done, you know, get rid of some closet space. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love cleaning out and selling stuff. Just, 
You know, I, I, tr- I try to minimalize stuff. I know somebody very close to me who's uh they call he calls himself a minimalist, I guess. Yeah. He like like I'll give him a gift. He's like, no, no, I won't take it. I'm like, yeah. Like, all right, st- I'm gonna stop buying gifts for you now. That's it. That's you know? where I'm getting. I don't want yeah. anything. No. It's I, like, uh, did, is it a book? Sure. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't need a trinket. I'm kind of getting that way at Christmas. I I love Christmas. I love giving gifts at Christmas. I you know I love to give more than receive, but. And I'm getting to the point where I just, you know, value being with people more than uh, uh, than a gift at the, at the at this age. You know, what yeah. the hell else do I need? We don't, man. <sighs> we, it's 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 the certain point where uh, you're filling this gap from like when you were younger, and it was like, oh, like well, things make me happy, and I'll sure. keep getting things and stuff, sure. and all of a sudden you just have all this stuff because you're trying to buy happiness, right? And uh, and that's not. That doesn't ever work. No, nope. it doesn't ever work. You just end up with plastic and dust, and sure. and still not happy. Sure, it's hard to leave town around Christmas. You know, I don't yeah. want to leave my parents around here alone. Uh, I'm I'm so happy my parents moved out here. The fact that my parents left New York at their age to come out here is amazing. So kudos to my parents. I'm glad they did. I wouldn't want them to be in New York right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, but it's hard to leave, I don't know, holidays, but like, I, I want to go back to like Prague during Christmas. I want to go see some European towns during Christmas and stuff like that and really spend those times out there. And that's how I want to spend Christmas in the future. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing, man, yeah. going and just like hitting some snow, doing something instead of buying something that that's I don't need. Absolutely. I always use it as an excuse. Like the the VR system was a, a Christmas gift, right? So it's like yeah. an excuse for me to buy a cool toy for myself. Totally. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's like, cool. Yeah, know? that's it was. Yeah. Got to buy some toys. And sometimes you need some toys, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's just the the current game I'm playing is to sure. try to try to get my fucking brain away from all those toys and all these negative tendencies that I've sure. created over the last 35 years of existence. You know, it's like. This uh, this little supercomputer thing up <laughs> yeah. here, man. It does it does what it wants, and it, it can become a real mess. Yeah. And when you're not working on it, I know it, what you mean. So I just mind my shit. You know this this coronavirus thing where it's like, oh, you're isolated in your house. It's like this is the opportunity of a lifetime to really unravel everything and oh. put it back together the right way, or well, the right or wrong way. I don't think there's ever a right way. It's a great thing say, to do. But yeah, there's. There's the way that feels right where I'm not being such a piece of shit all the time. Sure. <laughs> it's a great, great time to take that moment and, and run with it and be productive like that for your own body and mind. Oh, you yeah. Know? yeah. I kind of had the opposite. I, I didn't know which way to run. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> dude, I, t- I tell you a crazy story. I mean, yeah, uh, because Amazon was kind of like, hey, we're gonna, we're, you're not as everything became non essential yeah. in March. I mean, music gear was non essential, and we had to flip the switch and basically like make sure that anybody who was trying to shop on Amazon, you know, would get our orders through us. Normally, in March, we have like 100 orders, 250 orders on a Monday. After that day, after it popped, when it popped, when it went large in like that second week of March showed up to 800 orders on that monday oh wow and i didn't i was like i had people quitting they couldn't take the pressure i was like whoa <laughs> you're quitting <laughs> you're quitting right now like that doesn't make sense this is the opportunity of a lifetime to cash in like yeah. get to work you know uh make hay while the sun's shining man boy you know orders 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 so i finally got to take uh i had my first vacation i usually take a vacation in september for some reason last year we went to europe for our honeymoon this year uh we had pl- we, we planned and we did go to sedona but not not until my first day in vacation in, in a year and i get this wicked wicked toothache oh, like fuck. i'm in horse i'm in a ball crying i'm like i can't take i can't sleep yeah. The, the cats are looking at me like I'm. I'm a little concerned. They're petting me. You know, I'm not doing the petting. They're petting me. Yeah. So I had to make. So I had to do some crazy stuff last week. I mean, the past two week, three weeks of me being seen a dentist for in and out forever. Yeah. I've had quite an extensive uh, life with the dentistry. When I was younger, I had this crazy uh, benign, benign tumor. So it's a non deadly tumor. It doesn't really. It's not supposed to take your life over. But just took out my whole cheek and everything like that so i had reconstructive wow. 
like all this is like redone and everything like that. I mean, you wouldn't know it. I, I try not to show it, but you saw a feeling down there. Uh, feeling, feeling, yeah, feeling, yeah. yeah. But it's weird because the dentist is like, he's like, yeah. By the way, we see this tumor, but uh, his adult teeth grew onto his jaw, so we're gonna have to chop those off. And I'm like, this is what I'm gonna deal with for the rest of my life. I hate you. I hate you, dentist. So uh, I, re- you know, I've I've been doing like. I'm really proud of my dentist stuff. I mean, I put a lot of time and effort into it. And I got got my cleanings. And I I, t- I got to take good care of. Me. That's like my only problem in life is dentistry, you know, dental stuff. But recently, I went through this thing and got a couple things done. A couple little minor, minor dental surgeries recently. I'm dealing with some right now. It's kind of weird, you know. But uh, it was not a fun way to start my only vacation in forever, you know. So it was like, come on. But there's other things to complain about. No, a toothache is brutal. I had uh, this tooth back here. Uh, I had to I just have it pulled because I was in my early 20s, and it. I had a shitty filling done when I was a kid, and sure. it started touching the nerve. Oh, God. And it was just like, it was like, I didn't sleep for three days because oh. it happened on like a Friday night, and so no dentist, no dentist. And then oh, Monday, that's the worst. I was like emergency dental appointment. Uh, and then I went in and they're like, cool, we'll get you in for a root canal in two weeks. Yeah. They're totally chill about it. Right. And I was like, I'm not leaving your office with this tooth in my face. Yeah. They're, they're totally chill about it. They're yeah. Like, hey, you know what? Two weeks coming in. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you understand? We don't have two weeks. I got to go to Sedona on Friday. I got to sleep sometime. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I got, it, it was crazy. Like the, the, the week of the fourth, fifth and sixth, you know, I was there three times. They did a pull for the wisdom tooth. And I was like, I hope that that was the problem. And then, uh. She gets one tooth prepared for a, a, a second root canal. And the root canal come, specialist comes in. He's like, no. He's like, I ain't doing it. I'm like, what? I'm, like, I'm going to Sedona in three hours. You got to get this done. Yeah. He's like, no, you, you, you got to not do this. I'm like, oh, my God. So, I mean, and then it just, then I get, then I get real mad. And why? Our yeah, dental, why? dental program is so bad in America. Like, why is the insurance so bad? Like hard for dentists, you know. Like I don't, yeah. I, I'll never understand oh, that. Because, uh, because you're a piece of shit, and they just want your money, and then you can fuck off and die. I, I'm, you know, I like li- li- two out of work. three ain't bad. I like the piece of shit, and I like <laughs> fucking off and dying, but I don't want to give them my money. That's that's the that's, <laughs> that's all that that's the only part they care about. They just care about the money part. See, right. fixing your teeth is the, they're going to deny that as much as they can. It's a scary business. It's kind of like a tire or a, cal- a yeah. you know carburetor or something like that. It's like, oh, I really, I, I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't pay attention in auto class. I, you know, I don't know what the hell is going on. I rely. Yeah, you know, I'm a sucker. I rely on what you're telling me. You know, I go on faith here. I put about put up a little fight. Make sure you know I'm paying attention. Get the right discount, and uh, we'll see where we're at. But yeah, cars and teeth, man. What a difficult business dude no one will ever care about you in this country unbelievable no one will the, the only thing that they care about is how much they can take advantage of you sure. and how much money they can get out of your wallet and that's including the government you know like literally pain, every man. human being in this country yeah. is just like what can i take from keith i, like I want it. more keith i, I want to give <laughs> i want i want to give <laughs> what can i do to give right now please a couple fingers would be a good start. Wow. We'll go from there. Well, if Tony Iommi could do it. Right. Right. Imagine that. Tony Iommi, I mean, cuts his finger off and he's like, you know what? Still a guitar player. Let's, let's, do, let's, yeah, still a guitar player. I'm like, uh, isn't that wild? I mean, perseverance pays off. I mean, yeah. That, that, those are the moments that make me go, why are you not more proactive? Like, just, just, Get more stuff recorded. Get, be a musician. You know, get out there, do something. Uh, but wild to come back from that. What you know? You know what blows my mind more than anything? You know who I think it's the absolute gold ward in all of rock and roll as uh, the Allen. Oh, Def Leppard. That's exactly where I heard the drummer just, coming out of your mouth. Just, I heard it coming out. It's just that is got to be the greatest comeback in all of mankind. Bad he, motherfucker. He said no. Yeah. I'm fucking coming back. Fuck yes. Well, you know what I love about that story the most is the band said no. The Bizarre. band the band was like, <laughs> We're I guess we're gonna break up now. You know, they're, they're like, We're not gonna get a new right. drummer whenever Rick's got his arm torn off. Yep. No. And we'll just we all walk away from this together, you know, and yep. uh and he goes, Nope, I'm not gonna let you down and he brought it back and played drums with his feet. 
So amazing. So amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank God he did that. Didn't he like program everything? Didn't he like kind of like, wasn't he like, I'm going to do all this and kind of got it all started? I think he like put it all together. Like the yeah. first kid. Well, they, had, they, had a, they had some people helping him and sure. everything like yeah. that. But yeah, that was when uh, MIDI drums were starting to come out. And so right. conveniently enough, it was like perfect timing for him wow. to really get into that whole MIDI drum thing. And so he got a bunch of triggers set up and he's doing all of his drums with his feet. And then, uh, uh, and then they go on the road, right? And I know that for a second, they had an actual drummer playing behind him, right? And so he's all hooked up. They go out and they test. And then they start, you know, they, they're like, okay, cool. Rick's kit works. Sure. But then Rick goes out and, uh, and they play with a guy behind him. And oh, I never knew that. Yeah, just for the first, like the first tour or whatever yeah. when he was like coming off of sure. rehab just so he felt it was like his like a safety net you know wow. so that the band didn't feel hindered by him okay and then um dude couldn't make it but they didn't tell rick and then they just made his set live he played the whole set and they were just like we don't need you anymore you know the, the dude that was yeah. behind him they were just like rick's got it wow and then he started playing the shows Oh, I never knew that. Yeah. So it was just like one of those things where it was like, well, I guess tonight's the night we see if uh, he can actually do this. And sure. They didn't tell him, I think, that, that that guy was not behind him actually playing the show. Bizarre. Yeah. Oh, man. But that's, dude, Def Leppard, man. Yeah. What, a, what an amazing story. Like, the they made a, a, a video, like a, a, a dramatization of their lives. Yes, I remember that. And uh, that was a great movie. Was I was good. Like, oh my god, Def Leppard's like my favorite band now. Totally, I, dude. I've seen them live probably like five or six times. Sure, I love Def Leppard. Totally. Joe Elliott, what a vocalist. Totally, what a vocalist. Totally, like, I fancy myself a, 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 a singer. Yeah, and I can't touch Joe Elliott. Oh god, like, I can't make my voice sound right to Absolutely. sing Def Leppard like him. No, it's amazing. Yeah, the production and the sound and oh, I know. Uh, they, they're so tight and oh god uh, the, the the tone they're all british tones and everything like that they keep it still old school you know and i saw him recently it was the first time i first time i went uh, purchased a ticket to see def leppard i saw def leppard on on the tour in europe a lot i was lucky enough you know kiss def leppard and all these crazy bands like wayne and garth got my pass i'm like <laughs> you know uh but I purchased a ticket to see Def Leppard first uh, with my wife. We went to go see them at that residency. And I was just like, what? I mean, got great seats, middle, right in the, all the way in the back. It was like, man, do they sound good. And he's just killing it. He's just oh, sounding yeah. so good. They're just talented dudes, oh, man. Yeah, Such talented dudes. Yeah. So, and yeah, I'm, you know, they probably are playing to something, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the death level way. Yeah, they're still yeah, talented yeah, guys. Yeah, I had to learn that for the first time playing with uh, Click Tracks with a band I played with in from New York City. Uh, they were called Wild Street, yeah. and uh, they were Def Leppard maniacs. They made they made their two albums sound like good Def Leppard stuff. It was really really good oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, they did a good job with that. It was really really cool. That's what turned me on about them. You know, good Def Leppard production. Yeah, you know, tight punchy and glassy production's freaking everything man sure. you know on those records it's like good stuff going in man you gotta oh, make yeah. sure everything's quality everything's like new heads and new strings sure and, oh, yeah, man, yeah you know make it sound i like sexy. it i like it a little more dirtier than that yeah 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 I like it a little bit more raw than that i have uh I, I like both ends of the spectrum depending on what you're doing of course right sure. like if we're doing punk rock it's like a different thing from if I'm doing some classic rock or sure something, yeah something fancy pants but uh yeah yeah doing the, the grungy stuff is a lot of fun a lot I'm obsessed with the whole Bonham still recording from the six seventies. you know where very minimal mics and everything like that and just going off the drummer you know yeah big sound big Ludwigs I I, I still fancy those lots of air lots of air yeah I love that Love that. That's what Zonk's all about. You know, I don't ever want to say it's like Zeppelin. It's, it's, uh, somebody say they reminds me, reminds them more of like Rush, like early Rush, you know, riffy rock, not quite stoner rock, you know, not quite, not as cool and deep as that. Just rock and roll, you know, Zonk to rock and roll. But, uh, airy drums, Ludwig drums, big marshals, loud bass, and four piece, 
God, I love four pieces, man. When I was a kid, that's the way to do it. When I was a kid, uh, I used to, I was such a dick. I used to cover up. I learned a big lesson in my life. I used to cover up Brad Whitford. I had a cardboard piece covered up over Brad Whitford because I was for like this one year in my life. I, was, I don't remember what age I was, but it's like four pieces only four pieces. I, I, like, I was so into Aerosmith at this one point. I only wanted to see Aerosmith as a four piece. I like, I did it as like, I was probably stoned or whatever, but little did I know that Brad was, uh, the magic, you know, more than, than I ever dreamed with Joe, you know, but, uh, I remember telling, uh, I was, I was young too once. And I remember saying something to Sebastian Bach, like, I only like four pieces. He's like, fuck you, man. You're an idiot. He's like, <laughs> he's like, five pieces are the shit. I'm like, oh, run away. You know, that sounds like Sebastian Bach. To I was me. trying to have like a, a conversation with him, you know, tell him about how much I like four pieces. He's like, you yeah, know, you're an idiot. I'm like, yeah, all right, yeah. I just, it's probably right. You know, I love that dude, man. Yeah. I used to fucking ha have him at the club a couple times a year and he sure. is a trip. Boy, is he a trip, man. Super fun. I should have uh, went on the road with him. So yeah. I, I have one of these crazy stories where I, I'm convinced, I'm convinced it was the first time Dave snake, Dave, the snake, Sabo and Sebastian Bach had seen each other since the whole thing. Oh really? Well, it's about 1998. I'm in uh, New York City with Jesse Camp, and we're we are there to see. I think Leonard Skinner or something like that. No, Motley Crue. It was Motley Crue. And uh, I remember I'm right in the middle of them both. It just happened to get caught right in the middle. Of it. And Dave is like, <clears throat> he slaps, <laughs> slaps, you know, Sebastian. He's like, hey man. Yeah. And Sebastian slaps Dave, Snake back. Hey, and it gets harder, and Dave goes harder, and that snake, and then Sebastian goes a little bit harder. And they're both they did they did this three times, like hitting each other, saying hi, and just, they're just looking at each other like deep and like heavy. And I'm like, boy, I'm in the Ooh. middle of this right now. I'm like, what is going on? And I was like, I I didn't know what was gonna happen. I mean. You know, I'm not a huge Skid Row fan, but I think that they missed out on a huge reunion possibility. Like, yeah. I think that would, I know that they always say they'll never do it. You know, love Skid Row. I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a big a diehard fan, but yeah. I think that was a big opportunity. You know, the I guys mean, just hate boy. Sebastian Bach. Man, do they not <sighs> like him. He's wild and crazy, man. He's, 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 a, he's a piece of work for sure, man. Wild and, wild and crazy, man. That's his, yeah. that's his shtick, you know. He's, he's a wild and crazy guy. Yeah. Hell of a singer. But I, uh, I, I was, I don't know if I should say this, but I was with him when he bought a lot of weed for, with a check. Yeah. <laughs> he's on Trailer Park Boys okay, yeah. buying fucking hash oil and shit. Okay, like yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, everybody knows he smokes yeah, yeah, weed. Yeah, yeah. But he bought it with a check. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That must with be cool. Check? Yeah. That's bizarre. Man, we were like, uh, I think Jesse was like, hey, man, I got to go do some promo for two hours. You stick with Sebastian, hang out for a while. I'm like this young kid, like, hey, you know, Sebastian Bach and his wife and like, a couple other rockers and shit like that. And these stoners like, like get him. And they're like, yo, man, you know, come hang out with us. They're like, yo, you know, we got some stuff, you know. He's like, they open up in this apartment in New York City. The guy opens up the fridge. And it looks like, you know, the, the hip-hop videos, the beers all, all stacked and everything like that. It's yeah. just ounces of pot in this whole refrigerator. I was That's like, awesome. Oh, my God. And he's like, I'll take uh, three of them, 900 bucks. He writes a check. I'm like, that's pretty dope. Huh? I didn't know you could do that with paper. Right. Nice. Yeah, I mean, the check's going to cash, right? You hope. He's buying all kinds <laughs> of crazy shit. They're like, what's this for? I don't remember. Fuck I don't you. know. Yeah. Now, yeah, he's uh he always uh was insistent on smoking like hemp joints, you know what oh, I mean? Hemp like joints, yeah. no bulls or bongs or any of that shit that'll mess with his throat. Yeah. It was like hemp joints and wine. I thought I'd always have a fucking fat ass joint whenever he'd come to the club and I'd be like, What's up, dog? Totally. Yeah, man. Uh I always had fun with him, man. You yeah, know, like about, of course. He's always been yeah. nice to me and we always had a good time. He, Although he did he, smash he the shit. You. Huh? He needs you. I would love to go out with him, man. We, we've, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, he asked me one time, and then it was just like we couldn't work money out, you know? Sure. Now it's like a different story when I'm not making all that money doing corporate events on the side and everything. You know? Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, is what I, this is what I've been training for. Right, of My course. My freaking life. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, yeah. It's, it's hard when you're in Vegas and the opportunities are there to make really good money. Sure. Yeah. But it's like, ah, oh, but tour? 
Tour sounds fun too. It's fun, but it's like there's never any money in it, man. Sure, yeah, you know, it's just for the life experience. I, I actually got to go. that part where I was like, uh, kind of happy being home now. You yeah, know? I did. I I did it for a long time. I mean, not a lot of people know that. I mean, I was out there, man. Yeah, just grinding for years, man. That's what it is is a grind, man. <sighs> you know, I had I had hoped that the uh, you know the prize was going to come down. You know, I just kept at the claw. Kept putting it in for the claw, you know. Maybe you'll get the teddy bear eventually. You know? Yeah, I got the teddy bear though. You know, I, I I'm I'm super blessed. I, I have zero regrets. No regrets. That's uh, for Anthony Bourdain. Uh, no regrets at all. I, I'm super happy. I'm super lucky. You know, I got to travel and play and. I had a I had a blast doing everything, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not giving it up. I'm not throwing it in a can at all, you know. But I, uh, you know, I kind of like being at home now, you know. It's nice to sleep in your own bed. You it's know? great. It's nice to have a stable job that you know you're going to be able to keep a roof over your head. Sure. Um, but, yeah, like, yeah, going on the road's fun, man. But, yeah, dude, the stories, just the stories you told on this podcast alone, people would just love to have experienced that. You know, they're, yeah. they're, I'm sure there's plenty of people going, fuck, that guy did some amazing shit with his life. Because he did. Yeah. You know? I'm very I'm very proud. I'm, 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 you know, I, I, I don't take anything for granted. I, I try my best to, you know, always reach out and tell everybody I've ever worked with that I love and, you know, I just really value friendship. You know, it's it's interesting. It, it, it's unique. I keep in touch with Twisted Sister, you know, here and there, you know, like, yeah. they, they're very, you know, they're family, you know, we, the management, the crew, we, we all know each other very well. We're all very, very, very close. In fact, uh, their sound guy, George Marshall, uh, lives here now in Vegas and uh, he's been working, he was working with Lita Ford, uh, Steady, for years. He, he's worked no, with I everybody. probably worked with him. Yeah, I know you probably have. I, you two are my favorite sound guys in the entire universe. Oh, thank you so much. Absolutely. You and George Marshall are, are my favorite, 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 favorite sound guys. Yeah. I appreciate that, Val- man. Much respect and everything like that, you know. And uh, as much as George Marshall would occasionally have to tell me to shut up on stage, you know, the guitar player roadie, you know what I mean? He's, yeah. You know, wanking off a little bit, you know. But that was my job was to test the guitars, right? So when we were on Twisted Sister, you know, you get told to shut up every once in a while, you know. But I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm the guy. Like, if 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 these guys' guitars are not good, then uh, yeah, that was my argument. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're getting put on a bus. Do you remember a, a when when D yelled at the other band? Do you remember the video that D walked onto the made the paused the concert and walked across to the next stage and and, and reamed the roadie working on the next band. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, so he stops the show. And I, I don't think I was there for this one. I wasn't there because once again. I'm rocking or I'm rolling. You know what I mean? Either or I always had a job or had a gig. I was very blessed, you know. So I remember seeing this on YouTube. I know I wasn't there. And I I see they stopped the concert. And D walks over to the stage. Because, you know, the, the big concerts in Europe, the two big stages next to each other. And he walks across. I think it was, I don't know. I don't want to say the band. I don't know who it was. But he walks over there. And he's like, gets in the roadie's face. He's like, you make another sound during my set. I'm going to kick your ass <laughs> and i've seen i've seen d sometimes pull out the guns uh, in some rare moments yeah oh man and he's in good shape he's a great shape yeah man he went on some crazy diet that hooked him up large co uh but i've seen d get pissed off and it i don't want to be a part of it remember that part <laughs> so i see this video now i remember on the farewell tour you know, we had an agreement that I, you know, I was going to finish the tour out. I was going to do, I did the whole tour of the farewell tour and our last gigs in, uh, no, no, one of our gigs uh, it wasn't our last gig. I know we're in Europe somehow. And some reason Iron Maiden decided, they said, Hey guys, you take the, the top spot. We're going to play early because we want to get out of here. Yeah. That's how crazy Iron Maiden is. I mean, and their family works. I mean, they are the whole, their Iron Maiden's crew is like the coolest crew ever like family and everything wild together crew twisted was a different story i mean we are an amazing story but uh long story short uh we're at this gig in europe and this is after d bitched somebody this this guy out and i remember we were setting up on the show we only had a few minutes this time to get ready it wasn't a long it wasn't a long changeover when i say long changeover i'm talking 30 minutes it was like a 10 minute changeover oh my god maiden's gone on right 
some of my some of my partners, my colleagues, and we're making noise. I remember consciously not making noise on guitar at the wrong time. All right, I would play a little bit when Iron Maiden was loud just to hear what's going on to make sure I had signals. But then there was some guys fucking going off on the guitars. And oh my God, management comes running and grabs me. He goes, get into the dressing room now. And I, I get into the dressing room and Dia's like, who the fuck is making that sound during Iron Maiden's show? I go, listen, we, we were trying to be quiet. We told everybody we'd be, to be quiet. The guys are trying to get some loud. And D reamed us, reamed us. Because now we're essentially doing to Iron Maiden what another band did to Twisted Sister after D is famous for bitching this roadie out. Yeah. So now he's got, he's got a point, right? So now I'm shaking inside. I, I mean, when D gets pissed off, I mean, I don't want to be on his bad side. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be on Twisted Sister's bad side. Consciously, I knew it wasn't me. I'll just leave it at that. But hey, we have a job to do, and there's 15 guys on stage trying to fucking make shit happen so we can get on. It's your show, you know what I mean? But yeah. let me tell you the funny story. During the show, D makes an announcement. He does one of his raps, you know, and he, he, he is good at making people feel small. On it in his raps, he's very powerful talker and shouter. So he he tells the whole crowd of a hundred thousand people to shout "fuck you" to the Twisted Sister road crew <laughs> for making noise during Iron Maiden show. That was our, that was our punishment. That's funny. It was fucking embarrassing and totally funny at the same time. You know, like I I had to I had to be military about it. Like I could, it's nothing I could say. Yeah, know? just had to take it. You know, it was. But we, you know, we kind of screwed up. You know what I mean? It's like one of that was one of those moments. It was like, oh my god, we screwed up. Yeah, and you know when you're uh, when you're pissed at someone for fucking up, it's like uh, I, I sure. don't want any excuses from you. I nope. want an apology. That's it, and say it won't happen again. That, right? that, that's where I learned some of my life lessons was being with Twisted. You know, yeah, just shut up. That's it, dude. Shut up. Just take your take it. You know, like it's sitting there and like trying to run your mouth. You're gonna get thrown on a plane. Yep. Yeah, instead of just being like, ah, you're right. I yeah. was wrong. You're right, dude. Wasp threw me on a plane. Did home, they? On home. So here I go. I, I, that was one of my transition back in like 2008 or something like that. I, my first time over to Europe. We come back and I, I land on Sunday, and the manager on Monday goes, "Hey, you want to go back to Bulgaria? Like the same place?" I'm like, "Yeah." With who? He's like, "Wasp." Long story short. We're playing. I was booked for the whole tour, which was five months, going right into Christmas. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be on Europe for five months on a bus. This is going to be the greatest thing ever. Okay, I lasted two gigs. Oh okay? wow! They sent all their gear and they forgot all the European power supplies. So here I am without <sighs> any power supplies for Wasp. Okay, now what? What do they want me to do? Because they will not play with the cable. Now, I've got some deep rooted dislike for blackie lawless okay yeah do i, I i've never and I, i've always made a, a commitment in my life to never hate the music and hate the person okay? yeah okay so long story short they have me wiring nine volt batteries in series hooked up to a cable plugging in all their wirelesses now these batteries only last two batteries only last two or three songs yeah so i got a case of them in front of me and this is going on for one show they refuse to use any cables this is my first gig flying. They've got nothing. They sent all the major stuff and all the props and everything to London. We were just going to do these two quick gigs in Bulgaria and, and Turkey, Istanbul. It was a disaster, right? So I get through the first one. The second one, we get to Istanbul a Sunday in a holiday in Istanbul, Turkey, and there's no place to buy any power supplies, no Sam Ash, no guitar centers. No, then I got to do this again. Now, while I'm going through this, not only didn't Marshall Amp blow up on stage, okay? I ran out because his wireless, we ran out of batteries, his wireless camera. I, I, I sneaked around the stage all in black. I sneaked around all the way down, and I, I tried to give him a guitar cable. Big mistake. Big mistake. Yep. I got reamed. Reamed. And I'm going, you guys showed up without Europeans. You guys put me in this position, and I got sent home on a plane. I yep. could, couldn't believe it. I was like... Oh, you nasty. The day I get home, he has death threats, and the management's calling me. He's going, hey, Keith, what you been doing since you got home? I go, I did not put those death threats out. I said, that is just happens to be luck. I just landed. I have nothing to do with it, yada, 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 yada. Oh, my God. It was bizarre timing, total bizarre timing. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's celebrities, and they, you know, yeah. they, they don't exactly treat people nice oh. sometimes, so. 
getting uh, getting death threats isn't exactly a surprise for people no. like that, no. that level. Especially after you just kick the uh, roadie home. Right. <laughs> and they're like, was it that Keith guy? No, it wasn't me. That's it, too. It's like they said, we we said no cables, right? We said it once. You should have listened. <sighs> the whole thing, you know, like, Ugh. Blackie punched me. Did he really during a show? Because I, I was I was leaning over changing batteries for yeah. the, for for him, and for some reason, like here I am doing it for two gigs, and he's like he's mad at me because he goes he's like he punches me in the back of the leg, and if I was now who I was now who I wasn't then, it would have been a different story. Yeah. I, mean, I would have I would have accepted going home. Yeah, I would have taken matters into my own hand, but I was really offended that he punched me in the back of the leg to get my attention because he thought I wasn't putting the batteries in his thing, so. You know, I, I, War stories, man. I mean, I, I, I've seen some shit, and I, I one day I'm going to tell them all. <laughs> one right. day. One day I'm going to tell them all. Not the Twisted Sister stuff. They're too good to me. Ah, well, we'll have to have you back on to tell us some more stories soon, man. We're already... We're already at the two hour mark, son. Is that two hours? Is that, that goes how by fast so that goes? fast, right? I t- you hear it at the end, everyone, and it's like, no way two hours goes by that fast. It wasn't that fast when I was listening to no, it. No, it wasn't. I listen right. to it at work all the time. I love it. I, uh, I think you're doing a great job. I'm really happy to see you doing what you love to do and uh, making you. people happy along with yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, dude, it's, it's a fantastic little opportunity to get this off the ground. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully we were able to continue it and do something with it and Most make some people money with it. F- try to do this but this is nice yeah this is really nice right here it ended up really good yeah man. i really uh I, I, you know it wasn't too bad either you sure know? it was it's, it was just a lot of a lot of learning yes it was a that was the, the trial and error sure was a, a, the big the biggest problem yeah. you know i mean i think the money wasn't even i had most of it sure of course yeah yeah, it was just great stuff, man. It worked out really well, man. Well, I wish you the best of luck with it all, and uh, thank you. Keep doing what you do, and I uh, wish luck to you and uh, your better half for making the dream alive. She's amazing. She's amazing. They so, are amazing. Yes. I'll uh, do this right here. We'll go. Uh, thank you for watching to the fullest with Jason Froberg. Uh, my guest, Keith Robert, bad dude. Bad dude. Uh, bad. Yeah. Bad. I definitely want to have you back on, man. You awesome. tell fantastic stories. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks again for coming on, man. And uh, we're going to fade to black. Rock and roll. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.